Hello and welcome to session number 38 of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Hi, everyone. Ooh. Hello. 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 We made it. We're here. The music is loud. Hold on a second. Eh. Welcome, welcome. How have you, your last few weeks been? Ah, only You're been busy. two weeks. It actually went by pretty quick. Couldn't tell you what I've done. But not in a bad way. No idea what has transpired because, lately. Because it's illegal? Yes. Okay. I can <laughs> tell you only off, off stream. Oh. That's... <laughs> ah! That's not the answer I expected. I have amazing news too, but you guys can't hear it. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, I have great news. That huh? you're going to share? N no. Oh. Haha, <laughs> take that. I guess my birthday is coming up in just over a month. That's Woo! great news. What? My birthday is coming up in just over a month. Whoa. It's almost as if we have really close birthdays. <laughs> yeah. There's one coming up that's even sooner, I think. I was born like a week after my mom's birthday. If only, if only I had the time, it's better. <laughs> okay, well, we're done talking about birthdays. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, today we are missing Matt again, and uh, I, I, I guess it. We can we can either do the thing where we do a recap together, as as um as a cooperative effort. Would you guys be okay with that? <laughs> Otherwise, I'll do it. Cooperation. Oh, well, you guys sound excited to work together, so clearly that's what we're gonna do. Oh, I thought uh, there was another option. <laughs> I did start this sentence by saying either. <laughs> but the alternative is I do it. And oh. I'll take the, the inspiration die and I'll use it on my monsters. Your monsters? What monsters? We won't meet monsters. <laughs> it doesn't have to be today. Oh. <laughs> okay, well Rainy. then, uh, last session opened up with uh, the party reaching Simlielon and uh, uh, deciding to deal with uh, uh, Saskarin, finally. Uh, they pulled him out of uh, his prison and found him to be in his uh, um, less dangerous uh, predisposition. Uh, he was very sorry for the damage he had caused uh, uh, in in the colony, and he was willing to cooperate with the party and offered to take them uh, straight to Orm Tinhart. I can continue. I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, Saskarin mentioned that he eats fish in dreams, and they nourish him. That was interesting. He said Proof. it was, yeah, Pip brought him fish when he requested it, and he, he complained he that it just didn't like taste it. the same, yeah. Um, so the party just geared up and started heading east. Um, the, it, oh, yeah, during the, I think it was during that conversation that it became apparent uh, where uh, Orm Tenart actually was residing, which was a uh, a door frame in the middle of nowhere, seeming, seemingly not attached to any building, uh, which was a story that you guys had heard before. Yes, and I got some theories going. So you headed off with Orm the book, confirming that you are heading uh, you are heading straight towards where. Uh, Jamuel Fleetfoot uh, has uh, one of the many entrances to his magical tower that can be accessed from many places. 
on the way, uh, you were... Uh, you were intercepted by a, a the expensive kind of whirlpoint courier, um, a Boromian person riding a wyvern, uh, who had a letter to deliver with urgency to, to Pontifex. Now, said letter has not been shown to you guys. I was planning to do that today, but I'm gonna wait until... Uh, until Matt is available, because uh, it's up to, to Pontifex to decide whether to show you guys. I figure he will, but that's just a conversation we can have at a, at a later time. Uh, doesn't have to happen now. Alex got to pat the wyvern in question without losing any of his fingers. Uh, the further you traveled following Saskarin, um, Soon, soon you started to hear these sounds and you started to spot some machines. Uh, these ones not built as uh, as sturdy as the ones you've been fighting. These ones had even like bits of wood, uh, bits of plant matter that made part of their uh, otherwise metallic frame. Uh, you saw owl bears and goats and even another crab, and they were all working to gather materials uh, from from the area. Uh, after a bit of discussion, you decided that with uh, uh, Saskarin being with you, you would just walk right through them, and the machines did indeed not bother you. Uh, you approached this doorframe in the middle of nowhere, uh, upon which a single mechanical raven rested, and the door opened for you guys. Beyond its wooden frame, uh, you spotted the interior of a building. A large circular room filled with doors. Each one of them different from the others. Some looking uh, shabby, uh, others brand new and beautiful and expensive. Some made of stone, some made of wood, some made of metal. Um, and as you walked through the, thre the threshold, uh, each of you stepping into this large room with nothing but doors and a staircase heading both upward and downward. You interacted with a projection of Orm Tinhart himself. Orm insisted on uh, wanting the book in your possession, the one that uh, the soul of Orm inhabits, uh, the Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. And he offered either a fair trade or a fair fight for it. But as you, um, as you uh, pushed the issue and tried to understand why he has been doing what he, what he, uh, what he does, uh, why he's so desperate to get his hands on, on the book, what uh, his relationship to Jamuel even is, you convinced him to allow you to um, enter the tower without... Uh, um, Without the, uh, without him attacking you, and he agreed to speak with you in person. And as he greeted you and uh, uh, led you into the basement, you got to see the uh, the rest of his metallic creations, including even a a, a wyvern. Uh, I'm just gonna call it a mecha suit. <laughs> um, and he explained that uh, the reason why he was so desperate to put his hands on the Outlander's Get to Lidaria is that uh, he is actually the man who discovered the continent in the first place. And he shared a discovery with, with, with Jamuel, who um, basically backstabbed him and took the credit all for himself. And all that Orm Tinart wanted to do was to make a small change to the book to make a mention of Jamuel's friend and then publish it before um, Jamuel could stop him from doing so. Uh, of course, with the book now missing the majority of its information, his plan is uh, no longer viable. And so he showed you where Jamuel himself is. And he showed you the trick to his uh, um, s uh, seemingly... Uh, to his, uh, to his apparent immortality, uh, which is a series of, of bodies uh, that he keeps in his tower and uh, uh, to which his soul returns to whenever he happens to die. And one of those bodies is him, 
awaiting to be reborn, but kept in its tank by Orm himself, who has uh, pretty much sabotaged it. And uh, that's where we currently are at. We are still in the basement of the tower that used to be Jamuel's and Orm Tenart has moved into. Uh, Orm himself, this, this red-haired dwarf, a uh, mechanical genius, just sitting with his feet elevated onto a table, um, sharing ales with you and telling you his and Jamuel's story. Uh, let me bring uh, the uh, map back. Uh, wait, that's the outside. And that's the inside. Uh, I believe I also stole your minis with this. Here we are. There they are. <clears throat> what should I call this inspiration? <clears throat> Inspiration. Oh. Ha, easy. It's, it's for oh, you. Oh, that's great. Right? Easier. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you probably have to update your minis to match your new hit points if you haven't already. Oh. Queek didn't level up. Sorry, buddy. Always Weak, no. squishy. <laughs> Forever squishy. What about Duchess? Duchess does not have levels. But she's a hero. She's a hero in our hearts. Do only heroes have levels? Seems to be. I mean, <laughs> kind of. So... So at this moment, we're all sort of just sitting around as Tin, as, as Tin Hart is telling stories. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a moment where the M realized she did not update uh, the stat blocks that show up on the stream. <laughs> I knew I had forgotten something. <laughs> You're still level That's five. Okay. <laughs> uh, continue. Basically, this is your chance to... Um, if you thought of any more questions or any more things you want to discuss with either Saskaren or Tenart, uh, this would be the time. Otherwise, it is the end of the day. Um... The, the sun is just about to set. And not that you can tell from here. This tower doesn't have any windows whatsoever. Remind uh, me. But you knew before you walked in. Um, Tin Hart said that he was going to work on accessing some of the other doors, but uh, he's the only one who can control them right now, right? Have we figured out exactly how that works? Uh, he is the one who disabled them, and thus he uh, is the one who can fix them and make them mm. operational again. And uh, you agreed that while you guys are gone, back to Simlielon, he will check them and then tell you, like, hey, this, this leads here, this goes there. Okay. One of the last things we saw was the the big map, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do we have that as a picture somewhere? Oh. Is it, is it still on the, the ground as well? Yes, it is on the ground, and I do recall telling you that I was going to put it on uh, on the Discord, and then I didn't, but let me do that right away. And it's tracking think... some of his belongings. Oh, yeah. Uh, not the map. It is not the map that does that, but or Orm the... did mention that uh, uh, there was a method to find in the book. I don't believe he has elaborated on said method. I think he said some sort of some sort of scrying thing in the attic or upstairs. I thought or I thought that's what he was referring to. Okay, yes, that is that is it. 
And here it is. Zest I put it on. More. <laughs> I think. Okay, uh, on Discord. I think looking down at this enormous map and and realizing just how big this continent is, Pip starts sort of wandering around, uh, looking at all the different areas and. Uh, you know, after a while, he gets a little disinterested in hearing uh, Ten Hearts talk, so he starts to wander around, and then he he comes back and sidles up next to Tekka and says, Hey, hey, Tekka? Yes, Pip. This, this continent, it's, it's huge. Aren't, aren't your people, like, really, really far away. If this map is true, I have a long road ahead. Mm. Hey, hey, Tekka? Yes. I, I never ended up asking you, how did you get so far from home? Hmm. I never was at my true home. I was displaced since my birth. So now, I'm on my way home. So, do you think the furthest place is like in that sort of horn area? Or do you think it's in the shadow place that no one can see? Oh, Ateka! Mm-hmm. You have gotten a glimpse of the path you need to walk back when uh, you met with a certain entity in your dreams. I'm looking True. at this map. You know that it is this way. Ooh. Wait, which way? Uh, can you see my arrow? Oh, yeah. It okay. is in this area. Um, and you notice because... You know that one of the steps that you have to follow in order to get home will be to cross the sea. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Wait, we have to cross the sea? We can't take this land? Maybe there's like a, a I mean, break and there's like an island up here or something. Could be. Something like that. Because otherwise, like, it seems like the shortest path would be to cut across with a boat, but we've I mean, yeah. learned that that's a bad idea. But I mean that from this location, he needs to cross the sea somewhere else. Hmm. If you want, you can cross the sea. Well, good thing we have that boon. It's back home. <laughs> 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 this the is where you're patrol. meant to be all along. <laughs> yeah. Uh so so I what does Tekka the say to Tekka, that yeah. if anything? <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's just lagging a lot because I'm loading in. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, look at that thing! Oh boy. I didn't realize the, you weren't looking at the, the map while I was like, one. just drawing on it. But yeah, basically, if you didn't see, it's the part that's faded out in the northeast. <clears throat> you can see it on Discord gotcha. at least. Yeah. Well, that conversation is taking place, I'm just stalling for Sid's client. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Tin Heart yep, is <laughs> working on this. Uh, I, I, I kind of called it like a control panel, um, and that's basically what it is. But it's less fancy. And it is a little bit more more magical than uh, um, technology related. As Orm is currently working on on the setup that uh, Jamuel had in place, uh, and every once in a while the map flickers. It zooms in a little bit on one particular area and then back out. Sometimes it goes completely dark and he, he just says, uh, uh, sorry, and brings it back. Um, and you see Saskarin helping out. Uh, Saskarin clearly has 
No idea how any of this works, but uh, Tinard will ask him to fetch him something or to hold something, and Saskarian at the very least seems to know the name, the proper terminology of the tools that uh, Orma mentions. Uh, it seems like they've, uh, he has assisted him before, and he, he looks happy. Saskarian looks very happy to be here, and uh, uh, the, he, you haven't seen him smile like this ever. This is new. His face is beaming. Sixty-four <laughs> percent. Hazemir is nowhere to be found at this point. Uh, you left him somewhere. <laughs> and the uh, Pontifex uh, um, seems to have gotten. Uh, intrigued by his uh, uh, his magic wand, um, he has been waving it around and trying out a few spells, and it seems like he's on the verge of figuring something out. Hmm. Oh, no, no. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, finish the conversation between Tech mm -hmm. and Pip and then I'll let you continue. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, yes, I think. Yeah, Tekka looks to uh, the pattern of the map uh, on the floor. Mm. I remember in my dream having to pass land and sea. Passing through sands as if water itself. It must be this path. I must go. And yeah, points towards the, the fading northeast quadrant. Oh, so you probably can't just take a door there. It's possible that Chamuel himself never even explored this region. Tinhart, how far have you explored Ladaria? Have you seen the other side? I'm... I've never left the peninsula. The first time I found uh, this continent, that's where I landed. On the southern edge. I've never gone beyond it. I came back was planning to come back with Jamuel, and he left without me. And I only made it uh, here a few years ago. I've just been trying to find him ever since. I see. Then I'll continue wandering in the dark. As it was meant to be. Maybe there's a door that can get us close to there. Like, maybe over over here. <laughs> Whichever path gets me there sooner, the better. To what my knowledge, uh, if I if I may, Jamil waited on. Uh, publishing his book until he was done mapping out the entire continent. There is a good chance that he knows what information you seek. Of course, it, if it's no longer in a book, then... He, he just trails off, doesn't finish the sentence. Uh, I will not let you wake him for my means. He deserves what he has gotten from what you have told. Never in my wildest dreams I would have act I would have imagined that that you'd get it. Yeah, he does. That asshole deserves it. Can I insight checks? 
Can I inside check Tekka? <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh. Oh. Oh no, is this not working? The dice? Yeah, my 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 control panel is not working. Oh, mine what? doesn't either. <laughs> what? Oh no! What? Oh wait, there it goes. Whatever, I'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Hey, what? Bona. Oh, mine. <clears throat> mine works. Mm. Uh, it's a nineteen for me. My clear button doesn't work though. Okay. Uh. I, so I'm what wondering... is Talix looking for? Does Tekka truly believe what he's saying? Does he think that... Uh, does he think that Tin Heart is in the right? I think through... The, these days and weeks that Tekka... I'd imagine you'd find little reason to not believe Tekka believes everything he's said so far. And I don't think this moment is any different from that. Alright. Can I go through a door? <laughs> Can I pick a door and go through it? I'm afraid that the repairs are going to take a few days at least. You don't just stick in a gym and it works? That's how everything else here has worked. <laughs> how do I put this? When something hasn't been used for a long time, uh, it's going to require some maintenance. It will be alright, just two, three days. I have a question. Do you know where we are right now? No. No, not really. I don't really know if this place is just somewhere or if it is nowhere. Well, it can't be nowhere. Is there no way out of the tower? A window? Not that I've found. You never tried to break a wall? See what would happen? I would rather not. If we are in some kind of strange uh, semi-plane of existence, I wouldn't want to get sucked out of here. Is that a thing? Do we... Like, is that a... I thought the planes were like physical places. No. Look, I, I. Out of character. I don't. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, but like, Orm looking just genuinely a little um. Uh, who do I? How do I put it? Um, almost, almost scared. Just like a tiny, healthy amount of like skepticism as he shakes his head and like brings his hands in front of his face and he just says, "I don't get magic. I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to risk breaking the tower. Hmm. It's the only safe place I have." All right. <clears throat> Well, we have our own matters to attend to. Are you hiding as well? Do you need to be kept safe? Uh, I've mentioned that, that Lidarians don't like my appearance. I just try not to go outside unless I really have okay. to. Plus, Jamuel has been going to great extremes to keep me away from him and I would not be surprised if there is some colony out there somewhere that has a bounty on my head that he might have set up honestly that would be something he would do there's a good chance Brooke would know about that isn't there not if it's past the peninsula the colonies are all in the peninsula 
Oh, I thought he meant maybe like a different kind of Udarian colony, but yeah, at least for the blood. I mean, hmm. Yeah, Brooke, you've never British... like seen his face as like yeah. somebody that any any phantom has been requested to to track down. As far as you know. Yes, yeah, as, as, I mean, as far as I know, I've met you for the first time today. <clears throat> um, please, you're good with the phantoms <laughs> for now. At least there's that. Oh, yes. Oh, you're muted. I, I know, I was clearing my throat. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it sounded like you were talking. Yeah. <laughs> Practicing with my tin art voice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm, masculine. <laughs> um, are are you done with your drink now? I can take it for you. We have other matters to attend to. It seems like there's not much else for us to do here for a few days, anyway. We have some things to look into back in Simli Lon. Ah, yeah, like the Wizard Show. <laughs> yeah, for instance. You'll see oh. us again shortly. But, uh... You know where to find me. Yeah. Suppose you'll be busy in the meantime. Hey, are are we uh, are we good? I, no. I, I know I've caused. <laughs> we are not good. Is is Squeak visible? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. As a rat, but standing up on Pip's shoulder, and has the little rat arms crossed in front of his body. <laughs> Uh, Tinard looks like he, he he needs a few seconds to even locate the, the, the source of the voice and you see his just his forehead is furrowed uh, and he seems to be one like on the verge of asking some questions but he decides against it at the last moment and instead he just shakes his head and says I'll make it up to you do you even know who I am? I, Do you know who I am? You look like some kind of a Lidarian rat. I am Squikastorax Jr., son of Squikastorax Sr., and your machines blew me up not once but twice. We are not cool. <laughs> Orm just looks at the others like... He's not really sure how to handle this. Talk to him. <laughs> What he said is true. He did blow up twice. But if you build me a mech suit, mm, maybe we'd be square. Now I I do believe uh, that I designed my machines not to kill anyone ever. So when you say blew me up. Well, a crab sliced me in half, first of all. But you didn't die. What? All right, listen. We're not <laughs> looking for any loopholes here. <laughs> They took their pincers and snipped me like scissors. Mm, they're not designed to snip creatures in half. Well, then you screwed something up. Oh, they were quite violent. Well, that I didn't mean to. I didn't start out with with violence. If you just had given up the book, ugh, I didn't think anyone would care about Jamil's belongings. Really? <laughs> I apologize. Okay, well... You want me to build you some kind of metal suit? 
for uh, blowing you up? Maybe. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. The professor might be interested in that, but also he's already sort of wearing a metal suit, so I'm not sure. <laughs> um, do you mind if I take your measurements? Squ squeak yeah. squeak cash the rocks. That's S Q U. Goes on. Now it needs to be able to adhere to my many forms. <laughs> See, I'm now a, I'm now a bird. <laughs> And I'm now a spider. I'm now a squid. <laughs> and then there's me. I'm an imp. Stick to Did that Did you get one. all that? I can do okay. one. <laughs> Ormtain Art pulls out a little notepad and starts uh, uh, taking... Um, <laughs> the the measurements of Squeak's body. Make sure there's a hole for my pincer. Got it. All right, this this should do. Well, uh, are you planning to? Uh, if you'd like, you could stay the night. Uh. <clears throat> you, do, you don't have to, I know, but it's... Uh, How many days have right. we been gone for all, already? Well, the two days? Yeah, this is the end of the second day. How many days do we have till the magician's show? Like four? five more? One, two, three, four oh. more. Sure. No, I don't pay that much to sleep. Oh. Oh. Wait, do you pay him? Yeah, I paid him to come here so we could uh, talk to Orm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, where is he? Um, somewhere downstairs. We need to microchip him. <laughs> That's you paying for him is your problem. Hmm. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could also just tell him to, yeah, you can go home now. So just pay him and, and see ya. Oh, really? I, I can do that? I, I, didn't, so. I didn't write a contract. Well, just... Because, like, that was your first mistake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure you can tell him. You are dismissed. I'll tell him that. I'm I'm gonna practice telling him. <laughs> it's missed. You're fired. Uh, good luck. That's that. If you uh, don't leave, I'll remove your lycanthropy. <laughs> so I, I don't think I I got the answer. Where where are you spending the night? I think here, right? Yeah, I think that makes sense. If it's already starting to get late in the day, then why not here? Okay, so that looks good with that then, Pip. Is there mm -hmm. a bed at least? Mm, no, there's... Jamil's bedroom only has one bed. Sorry, I, I don't even use Wait. that though. You can, you, you, you can. Well, his bed is a little small for you. Well, no. Would we rather sleep someplace that we know is real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I get it. You're free to leave whenever uh, that door he points where you came from it's it's always functional in fact there have been a couple of machines uh, every once in a while going in and out of it just bringing in materials
What's the group consensus here? It's what does what does Pip think? Hmm. I I think Pip in his childlike curiosity is so intrigued by this place that he wouldn't mind staying longer. But that's just okay. Pip. <laughs> the proper place to sleep is always better than outside. Especially if you don't know how long you'll be on your foot. Right? Sure. Okay. Um, this floor being, for the most part, empty is actually a, a good enough place for you to, to put down your, your bed rolls and, uh, um, it's, 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 it's a strange feeling. Um, the, the temperature in here is pleasant. The air never feels like it, uh, it becomes stale. Um, there is, uh, this, despite the fact that there is no, um, no windows and only one door that occasionally is open. Uh, it never quite feels like you are out outdoors or indoors. Uh, it's it's bright as well, uh, and that turns out to be something that uh, um, that Tin Heart can turn off. Um, so whenever you are ready, it's you're going to basically be plunged in sudden darkness. <laughs> Um, he, Tenart, and Saskaren are going to be uh, in one of the floors downstairs. And, um, well, you're left on your own. Is there anything you'd like to, to do or talk about? Uh, let me actually go ahead and say this um, before you answer that. Um, Alex. Uh, ever... Ever, um... Ooh, hold on. Let me start that sentence over. <laughs> and think about how I want to word it. Um, when your father gave you a leaf of Vakanath encased in ember, it was shortly after that that you started to, to feel this, this connection to the gods. And you started to develop uh, uh, magic for the first time. And you always felt like there was something more uh, to this precious talisman of yours. And uh, tonight, uh, you feel like you're beginning to crack some kind of secret uh, um, carried within this item. And uh, you end up actually spending a portion of the evening just sort of like holding it and feeling some kind of energy swirling within it and feeling like it's almost within reach. Um, that's it. Okay. Uh... I think Pip would go f to try and find Casimir. Hmm. Um, you find Casimir, uh, where apparently one Tenhart and Saskarin, um sleep, what they've made into their own sleep quarters. It looks like they're using some of the couches in one of the lower floors. They've put them together, um, like near each other. Uh, and they have blankets and pillows set up. <clears throat> and uh, But they haven't gone to sleep yet. And instead, Kazimir is having, is having a little chat with the two of them. Uh, when mm. when they hear footsteps, uh, uh, they'll just turn their attention to you. Okay. Pip takes a breath, uh, builds up the courage. And uh, while, while Pip was practicing how to let Casimir go. Uh, he talked to Pontifex, and uh, Pontifex was more than happy to write up a notice of termination. <laughs> <laughs> Very lengthy. <laughs> and After letting it, you know that he can write on anything without yes. using a pink. <laughs> so Pip hands him this uh, 
this pink slip and and says you've been served is that the right um <laughs> I've I'm sorry, but I have to let you go. <laughs> Casimir looks down on the paper. Uh, it's ridiculously long, and then he turns it <laughs> over, and there's more text, and clearly doesn't read any of it. And he just says, uh, um, "Okay." As per the terms of agreement, I have, uh, I will be offering you severance pay. <laughs> I think you hang out too much with Pontifex. Um, you're you must leave the the premises within forty eight hours, or all services will be null and void. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, I, I got it, kid. I got it. Krista. Uh, it's been a pleasure working for you. Uh, it runs off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait! <clears throat> my, my severance pay! <laughs> It'll be in the mail. <laughs> oh my god! She got scared. <laughs> All right. I think once Pip comes back up from Casimir, Casimir, he, uh, Brooke would wave him over to come to him. Oh, I'm sorry, Brooke. I know he was your friend. Did you dump his ass? I dumped his ass <laughs> good job good job you know what this is a story i can i no i will always tell to the other phantoms that kazimir lost his job for, from a kid i'm not a kid i'm 12. from a 12 year old that's a good story good job how did he take it oh my God. um he he got a little emotional and i think i saw a tear start to well up in his right eye he cried <laughs> oh, well oh, it's yeah. a little dusty down there so it was hard to say okay we'll count it we'll count it. it was definitely a cry that's casimir he's very emotional but he'll get over it so if you ever need his efforts again just ask him <clears throat> he won't have any hard feelings Nah. He'll be good. <sighs> um, I did want to talk to you about something. If you got some time. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he scratches his head. Uh, earlier during the confrontation with Orm, right? I did start pushing you towards the exit. I, you might remember, right? Yeah, I remember, Brooke. I... Hmm... I hope you... I... Okay, hmm... I hope you understand that in that situation, that was not to actually make you leave, right? It, it wasn't? No, it was not. We are... We're a group, so we can't really leave someone behind, even if some people don't always make the smartest decisions. But with all the information we have now, uh, it feels like we have kind of some responsibility to stick together. And honestly, I'm, I mean, I can only talk for myself, but these are good people, you are good people, I guess I'm good people, so either of us dying is not really an option. But like, sometimes, yeah. Like how you're not supposed to leave a soldier behind. Yes. Most of them. Like, that is the general rule. Right? There are always exceptions for situations, because you can't factor everything that happens into it. But, yeah, that's the general rule. You don't really leave that one behind. But I... sometimes... 
if the situation is really dire, we have to think on this on this. And in this situation, Talix had a decent idea to get us all out. Right? I he somehow motioned it to me, and he checked the doors, and none of them were open or were able to open. And the only way out was the exit I tried to push you towards. And we. Well, the situation Orm offered to let you go, and that was basically, or could have been our chance to run. Just keeping the door open, the moment you're supposed to open it, to leave, right? So sometimes yeah. on the spot there are plans that might look like they're, they're there to banish you, right? And they don't mean that. So if you ever pick up on something like that, try to... Try to play along. Okay. I, okay? I understand, bro. Hey, I got you something. Got me something? Yeah. Um back at the back at the toy store, I I remembered how you were a soldier and and so I Can you I wait for one you. second? I got someone at my door. What? <laughs> Brooke, which door? <laughs> which door? It, it's it's one of the owl bears just dragging in uh, this the these wooden logs. Passes right between the two of you, seemingly unaware of uh, the conversation that's taking place. Yeah, just I think it's having... Alex. <laughs> I was gonna say something. Oh, you're a little quiet again, it... Jason. I was going to say something before. I think if Talix had a vote, we would definitely not be sleeping on the floor where there's like a constant traffic of robots moving around. But, whatever. Uh, you can pick one on the other floors if you'd rather. It's just this no, would be less messy. Hmm. There's the... Uh... The warehouse that has all the material. No, that's exactly where they're bringing no, them. No, no warehouses. Uh, after that. <laughs> I mean, Jamiel's bedroom was mentioned. Would you like to check it out? Sure, what's it like? Scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, he has all these scrolls. <laughs> Imagine the powerful spells he might keep. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> the door didn't okay. open. No. Okay, you got me something? <laughs> uh, which one? What do we want to resolve you, you first? You can finish the conversation. Oh, okay. sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, Pip. Pip takes out uh, of his bag this little set of gnomish toy soldiers and he hands them out to you and he says I, I just thought that since maybe you were a soldier you'd, you'd like these Brooke looks at the, at the toy soldier and he smiles and opens up his hands to take the gift. He dumps them all in your arms. <laughs> How many are there? <laughs> like a dozen. <laughs> hmm. They're pretty small. Little wooden, posable figurines. <clears throat> Maybe not wooden. Might be... I don't know. I... I appreciate that you thought of me. It's it's a nice thought that means you listen. So thanks for that. Oh, I got stuff for everybody, actually. Oh. What did you get for the others? Well, I'm not gonna tell you. What? It's a surprise. But not for me, for them. Well, it's a su Um, hmm. <laughs> but if I tell you, something tells me it won't be... <laughs> complete surprise for them. Oh! Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. If you want, you can whisper it in my ears and nobody okay. can hear. <laughs> oh. Yeah, mm. Telex would like that. <laughs> I 
have just cursed you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> Find something else <laughs> to to occupy his time. Um, Brooke will look, uh, take a closer look at the gnome soldiers for a while. Then. Um, okay, they're, they're just toy soldiers. Oh, um, oh yeah, yeah, I was just describing what okay. I was doing. Okay. Best to identify. <laughs> I, I, they're all gnomes, right? <laughs> yeah, they're gnome soldiers. The majority of them with tiny little guns and rifles. Yay. <laughs> they shoot tiny little BBs. <laughs> They should little babies. <laughs> babies. <laughs> Are the babies the targets or the projectiles? No. Oh god. <laughs> what kind of toy store were you at? <laughs> while, while Brooke is questioning uh, uh, Pip's uh, shopping choices, um, Alex, you, you check. Uh, um, uh, you, you check the room that has been pointed to you as being uh, Jamil's bedroom, which is upstairs from uh, the room with all the doors. And uh, um, it it strikes you with like how normal this one particular room is compared to uh, the craziness of everything else. Uh, the um, uh, in addition to like the, the room with all the doors, there were all the other floors full of machines and some uh, wizardry shenanigans. But this is the bedroom of a halfling with small furniture, a small desk and a small chair and a, a bed too, too small for you to sleep in. Um, really, the only absence of uh, the, on the only thing that's that that would be unusual is the absence of windows, um, which <clears throat> normally uh, uh, it, it makes the room kind of look like it's in a basement uh, because of that. Uh, but the, the the walls are with uh, words. Uh, the walls are made of wood, uh, and the floor is polished, and you can see your own reflection in it. There's plenty of bookshelves that are uh, filled up with with all sorts of books, and those are of uh, of Plurnan origin. They're written in Plurnan languages. You recognize a few um, a few of them. And, uh, um, are you looking for something in particular? Uh, well... Anything that would hold great knowledge that would be useful to us? <laughs> uh, roll an investigation check. Will it work this time? No. I think I need to relog to get oh. that to work. Uh, during the break, we can just restart all of our clients. That is a 20 total. Ooh, damn. Okay. Um, some things of uh, uh, interest that you end up finding as you poke around in the room uh, completely... Um, uh, you're you're on your own and nobody disturbs you. There is one fairy dragon machine um, that whenever you touch something, it comes over and uh, um, if you're not using it, it will put it back where it was. So if you take out a book and you look at it and, you, and then you put it back in the shelf, uh, the machine comes over and adjusts it by like half an inch to put it exactly where it was before you touched it. And so it's sort of like watching what you're doing and always jumping in to, to fix anything um, that you have put out of place. But uh, besides that, you are uh, unhindered. Uh, you find the things that... Uh, there is a shelf that is filled with little jars um, and, and things that appear to be either, either spell components or potion ingredients, or perhaps just both. Um, and uh, you, you identify the majority of this... Uh, uh, of, of the flora here as being uh, of... Uh, Ladaran origin. Um, the 
the books being all um, written in Plurna, they probably wouldn't have any kind of information that you'd, you'd like, um, that, you're, that you're seeking. And uh, uh, the, the one thing of interest that you would end up locating is uh, a... is an orb. This um, pretty bulky, <clears throat> particularly if you imagine a halfling holding it. Um, bulky sphere uh, that seems to be made of amethyst. Uh, it's beautifully polished. Um, it's, a, it's a very uh, deep shade of purple. And, and touching it, uh, you, you can immediately feel the, uh, uh, the touch of magic within it. And uh, um, you bring it to the table and you, you set it down and uh, you sit in the uh, pretty small chair for you. And uh, uh, you have an inkling of what this might be. And as you're, uh, you have a hand over this, to this orb and uh, you think about uh, Orm the book. And you get this feeling within your head. Like you know exactly the direction that it is in. Oh. Is, the, is there a machine looking at me right now as I hold this? Uh, the fairy dragon machine is looking, yes. If I walk towards the door, does it... react um no i take i step one foot out of the door he just watches i'll go downstairs okay oh uh, i think i found something I might show the professor first, though obviously he's not here, but yeah, I'll just show the group. Okay, you're quiet again. I show the orb to the group. Where did you find this? In Janiel's bedroom. I think this... This is a way to track his belongings, including that book. <clears throat> Can you get it to work? It sort of just worked on its own. I didn't even need to... I don't know, it just sort of came naturally. Hmm. It's... I can feel... That is what is. Tinhart said, correct? If we knew of any other belongings of his, maybe this... Would be to them as well. Let's ask Orm. Right? Well, book Orm. Sure. Oh, book Orm. Was this seen in my uh, in my vision of Shamuel? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pontifex will hand over the book. Um, while, as I imagine, he would offer to identify the the item. Sure. So that's what he would be doing in the meanwhile. Uh, what do you tell Orm? Uh, do you know what this is? What sorts of things did he use it for? Hmm. 
wood. Oh, <laughs> like a Minecraft compass. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Did, didn't they just add, like, the new ones that point to your yeah. last spot where you died? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much! <laughs> Do you know what sorts of things he found with it, aside from this book? Yeah, uh, any specifics? Oh yeah, I have seen that. Well... And close. <laughs> wow! I was just typing that! <laughs> well, are they the same particular clothes all the time? Don't we all wear the same clothes every day? <laughs> Wait, you don't have different sets of clothes on you? No, yep. I wear the oh. same clothes every day. Oh god. Mine looks the same, but I promise they're different. Just have them each ten times. Well... Hmm. So, I don't have a direct memory of the staff that I've seen. I've only heard it described, but... You all saw the vision with me, right? Maybe one of you could find the stuff. Huh. So what do I need to do? Just hold the orb and think of the stuff? Try it. Okay. Take the orb and think. try to imagine the stuff I saw in his dream. Okay. Um... Hmm. Jamu, jamu, jamu. Okay. Um, Brooke, you, you picture uh, this staff. It was quite... Uh, um, it, it definitely left an impression on... Well, those of you who can remember the dreaming question. Uh, it, was, it was made of wood and it had uh, uh, this spiraling pattern of metal um, that, that covered it in almost its entirety. Uh, and at the very top, it had a... Um, a bluish sphere all, all also felt like it was probably made of uh, some kind of gemstone you only got um you got to see it and then you were blinded by it for a moment uh but it was certainly fancy it had that wizardy feel, uh, feel to it um and brooke you you think about it you can draw your, your memory of it and you you can picture it in your mind's eye and you can feel like you have an idea of where it is Huh. Um, the staff. Let me make sure I got this right. This, ah, these were not notes I was prepared for. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Wait, we can feel a pull in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From here. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, no, I'm wording this wrong. Uh, for you, it was a pull in a particular direction because the book was directly downstairs compared to you. Okay. Um, for Brooke, it's it's a different kind of feeling, but it is like a without knowing the actual location, like what it looks like, if it's in in a house or if it's. Uh, abandoned somewhere on a road, but it is a, a feeling of uh, it is in <laughs> a certain spot in space. Uh, and I'm just making extra sure that I got it right. Did you say in okay. space or in some space? In some... <laughs> like, physically somewhere. Okay. So I know it's somewhere. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna draw it on like this little map okay. that we have on the table. 
Um, it is mm. physically somewhere here. Oh. <clears throat> and again, you don't... You don't have an awareness of uh, what kind of place it is. It is it is sort of like a directional feeling, but then again, it's not a particular direction either. It's so magic and it's it. weird. But like, so he, you guys are on this floor. Map. Yeah. Um, Orm would have shown you. Orm would have shown you how to like get the map on the floor to to show <laughs> up, so you can just basically bring it back and be like, I feel like it's here. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure how it got there, considering where he died. But and I go towards that area. It seems to be around here somewhere. It's another sanctuary of his. Maybe one of these doors will lead us to it. <sighs> um, and the when you next check with Orm the book, uh, um. He has uh, uh, something to say about it. Hmm. So, someone took it and brought it there? Huh? Huh. We haven't slept yet, have we? You have not. <clears throat> so that means that either someone else was there before us and just took some stuff and dipped, and then, or, or what? It could be Saskarn. He was the only one there at the scene, right? Yeah, but how did he get it here? Is that possible? Wait, he ran out. He ran out of there while we saw him. He didn't have the staff then. Perhaps Jamiel moved the staff. You mean by magic? Yeah. Otherwise, we never saw it leave the place. You think maybe Sus did we ever ask Saskarin if he saw someone else down there? We can ask. We should do that. Either when we wake up or when I do it right now. When we wake up. Okay. What did the professor learn from identifying the orb? Um, Pontifex confirms what you have already found out, that uh, uh, this or uh, specifically, this orb is connected to a series of objects. Uh, it cannot be used to just locate anything, only the items that have been bound to it. Uh, and uh, by expanding spell slots, it can give uh, a clearer directions and even allows to directly scry on them. Uh, the spell slots in question, though, are higher level than any of you can currently cast. So we sleep? <clears throat> yeah. Good night. Ah, uh, Talix. Uh. What do you do with the orb? Oh. Put it in the backpack, I guess. Uh, is, is Orm gonna come up and talk to us? Um, I, I, I pictured this as being like, after we turned off the lights for you guys. Um, Alright, yeah. 
Uh, just go ahead and take your long rest, and then you can have any final conversations. <clears throat> um, there, there comes a moment uh, at some point, and I, I, I can't say night because it's it's hard to tell when anything is taking place in in, in here. Um, but some of you will will hear uh, the the soft and low uh, uh, noise of uh, uh, machines uh, moving around, and uh, uh, there is breakfast brought to you by one of the crabs. It's basically rations like it's all dry food and uh, uh dry meats and <clears throat> nothing that has been cooked um but you are given food for for today Aww. oh italics also made a point to try to sketch a crude outline of this map and also mark that location that brooke pointed out mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you can basically, the, the copy of it that you have on Discord is, is exactly what Talvik says. It's, it's available for you guys to, to, for consultation at any moment. Uh, and as you begin to, to wake up and pack your things and eat your food, um, uh, Ormtain Art and Saskarin and Casimir too will eventually show up. Hold on. Y yes? Well, okay, no, it's fine. What is it? If you if there's anything nope. you need to do before they nope. Uh, hmm? nope. Okay. Uh Talix will go ahead and take out the orb and present it to Tin Art. Orb Tin Art. Yes. So, uh we've looked into this a little bit. Naturally. And? Is it of, uh, did is it, it work? A great... Well, yes, we found something new. Jamil's staff. We know where it is now. His Do you know of any other staff. belongings of his? Well, I've... He, he thinks for a moment. Um... <clears throat> then he shakes his head and he says the staff is something he's had with him uh, already from back when we were friends in Plurina that's all I can think of if you guys have gotten anything new while here in Ladaria, never managed to approach him somehow it's quite far from where he Met his end at the hands of Tuscarn. Which is strange because I don't recall Tuscarn taking the staff. We saw the moment he left. Um, I wouldn't even need to call an inside check as Tuscarn is visibly just reacting to this and he has a very guilty look on his face. What do you know about this, Tuscarn? Uh. Um, I... I am sorry. Do you know anything about the staff? Um, I... I throw it away. You must have one hell of an arm. I... I get... Angry. Um, I, I can't leave the the cave. The sea is too tall. Um, the exit is full of water, and I get scared, and I get angry, and I throw 
thick in water. And so the sea. I am sorry. Can <clears throat> you not swim in the sea, Suskarn? Uh, I am not allowed in the sea. I am not allowed in the dreams. I am not allowed to be here either. Kinnart puts a hand on, on one of his shoulders and says, That's nonsense. You can be wherever you'd like. You're always welcome here. So, uh, if this staff floated down into the ocean, um, there's a pretty good chance it winded up in the hands of someone like me. Or someone much more powerful and scary. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like a like a much bigger, like scarier. Sure. My dad's big and scary. <clears throat> you want to ask your dad if you found a staff? I bet my yeah, dad could on. beat up your dad. Let me let me ask him. He's in a meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why do I ask? He's been in a meeting for a really long time. Uh how long? A few years. Important meeting, huh? I guess so. <laughs> I miss my dad. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> You left to get cigarettes. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I sure love my dad, though. <laughs> uh, he'll come back. Oh, no. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, maybe we're lucky, and if it's like in that area, if I look at the map correctly that's also where one of the rivers is right maybe a river which took it yay no do we need that stuff uh pontifex is excited at the perspective of checking it out no i also thought there was a chance it could link us to something of jamuel's one of his locations but if it is just there by by the hand of some fiends or some beings allied with them then might not have nothing to do with Chamuel at all that location hmm. would we even allow to take would we even allow to be able to take it cross to the dm isn't it like that you pass the peninsula you can cross but not take um it is Wasn't correct Huh. Beyond the peninsula, you have no rights to take anything from it or bring anything and like build things. Hmm. You can just visit. Now, this might become a bit more complicated. Well, if it's something that's Chamuel's, might be a difference. I mean, if you saw how our last talk too. Lidera, with Lidera and Sven, right? And their opinion on what is theirs and what to share and what is their right. Pretty sure they say fine that it's there, right? Something like that. I thought things went rather well with the Aitara, huh? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Anyways. This, uh, this orb, I suppose you're using it to keep tabs on us for the time being, right? Ah, uh, that's what I have been doing. Though I suppose that's no longer necessary. Hmm. 
Would you be comfortable with us taking this? Yeah. Yeah, alright. It's not like I have a, a use for it anymore. Ooh. Okay. I've got work to do. And you look like busy people. Yeah. See you in a few days. I'll be here. And uh, it's been nice meeting you. Brook nods. And uh, Orm Tinhart and Saskarin head back downstairs. Yeah, Casimir whistles as he walks up to the door um, and opens it and holds it open for everyone. <clears throat> Exits. Yeah, when Brooke walks past him, he says, "Got dumped by the kid." <laughs> <laughs> he punches you on the side. Oh. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you head out uh, of uh, Jamil's tower. Uh, you're back in the uh, in the area where the owlbears and the goats and the crabs are hard at work. Um, this time without Saskarian's guidance, but uh, you, it's not going to be difficult to retrace your steps uh, uh, back uh, uh, towards Simlielon. Are you still trying to travel at a quick pace? Mm. Probably don't need to at yeah, this point. Yeah, let's let's go at a normal pace, I guess. Seems yeah. like we've got enough time to get back. Okay, I am. Have there it is. Uh, take your minis back. Uh, I'm just gonna throw this over here for the time being. <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> eh. <clears throat> okay, that's everything. And Do you want uh, Casimir's mini as well? I put it on mine. Oh, you can keep it. Uh, Casimir is just coming with you. <laughs> yeah. He's just... You know, just traveling. <laughs> uh, I'm going to erase now the the foxes. No. Uh, Pip does give Casimir his uh, severance pay of twenty gold pieces. <laughs> Please. In an enclosed envelope. <laughs> Are you the I mailman? can make it float to him. Oh, actually, no, I can't. <laughs> Never mind. Oh my god, help me! This is taking forever. <laughs> Bring your erasers. We need every eraser <laughs> on deck. I can't. I can't. Ah, thank you. Oh, there's a dot. Beautiful. Clean this mess up. Uh, as you are retracing your steps, uh, um, and you're sticking mainly to, to the path that Saskarin has shown you, uh, the, the journey back on the first day is uh, uh, normal, without any surprises, and you're far from the road still, so you don't, you don't come across any travelers. Uh, and uh, no war point, uh, uh, postman find you and um, Talix with uh, every little break uh, that you take on the way you you find yourself just going back to this to this uh, uh, ember uh, feeling like you're just on the verge of figuring it out 
and uh, uh, by by the time that uh, the sun is beginning to set and you uh, set up camp for the night, uh, Alex, you're back at it, just thinking and trying to to grasp at this magic that you can feel is within it, until you feel something. It's like something in your head clicked into place. And uh, there is a burst of magic all around you. It's it's sudden. It knocks you back a little bit. And I have to ask you a very specific question. Okay. Uh, don't overthink it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need you to pick oh, no. three of the following seven options. Oh god. Okay. Um, so, choose between. Which limbs do you want to keep? <laughs> choose between a bedroom, a study, a dining room, a lounge, a washroom, an observatory, and an empty room. Oh, I thought empty room sounds hype. Um, okay, bedroom, study... Dining room. Dining room. Observatory. Washroom. Lounge. An empty room. Uh, bedroom, study, washroom. Bedroom, study, washroom. Okay, thank you. Um, with this, we're going to go on a little break. Oh. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm going to save the client, and then we're going to restart to see if uh, uh, Jason can roll dice after this. Uh, so I'm sorry. What was Talix fiddling with? Um, the. The spellcasting my... focus that he has been yeah, using. My, my amber. Oh, it's, okay. it's a leaf that to Pip would be just any other leaf. Um, uh, I, it's a leaf uh, yeah, in amber. Talek well, showed me that leaf before. They, they do look special, don't they? They're like crystalline or something? Oh, you're right. Do, yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I, say, I, I thought you said that to me. Yeah, that, that's my bad. Valkanath has special leaves. Uh, in your little, um, uh, huddled around your little campfire, um, in front of Talix's tent, uh, where the half elf currently sits, there is a flash of light. Uh, everyone suddenly turns to see what's happening. And where a moment ago there was just, um, empty space uh, right on the side of the tent uh, you see taking shape growing out of the ground um, incorporating the the dirt and grass uh, that it's it's pulling up from beneath itself uh, something growing upward uh, becoming taller and taller and taking on the shape of a square tower that appears to have uh, three floors from what you can see uh, from the outside uh, this one, it, the the design of it reminds uh, those of you who have uh, lived there. Um, and actually, well, you've all seen Similianon. It's it's uh, in it's an elven design, uh, the kind of towers that they are known to build in uh, normally in Elinarden. Um, and uh, it it simply has a door at the base of it facing directly, uh, like, it's it's a few feet away from, from Talix. What? Like, it's in front of me? Yeah. There is a tower here now. Can I, can I remove my blindfold? No, no not yet. <laughs> uh... Alex? Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh. How? 
Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to get out my stick and just brace myself and see if anything's coming out of the tower. Mm. Everyone, wake up! Something happened. There's nothing. There is no noise besides uh, um, your your companions uh, beginning to gather around you. Uh, Casimir just under his breath saying, "What the fuck?" But the tower is otherwise just there, and the door does not open on its own. I will go to the door and knock. Uh, you you knock on the door, and there is no reply. While the majority of the tower from the outside that you can see seems to be made out of dirt, there's grass and flowers sticking out of it, some branches that he pulled up as it grew. Uh, the door itself is made of wood, um, like wooden planks. And it just makes a very satisfying knocking noise as you, uh, <laughs> as you hit it. It's oh, what a beautiful normal mouth. door. <laughs> now, uh... Okay. This might have come from me. Not me, really. But I thought I felt something from my... from the amber. But this didn't feel like casting a spell. Well, but... Is this some form of Vadarian magic? I'm I'm confused. Did you pray? I. Uh, it's not quite like that. I mean, I thought I felt something, but it was different. It just sort of happened? Alex is going to walk around the perimeter of the tower. Are there any windows? Is it just the one door? Uh, <clears throat> there are windows. There are um, one per side um, on, on, each, on each wall that is in where the door is. Can I look into them? Uh, yeah. Are they glass windows? Yeah, they're, 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 they're yep, they're made of glass. So the whole thing's like made of dirt? Mm hmm but the windows and the door are not. They're hmm. obviously like built. Um, and well, I would have, I'm just going to let you take off your blindfolds now. Um, you're going to see every room. I wanted to hide the, the ones you don't have, but, uh, oh, well, it doesn't work. So you're peering into this one. Oh, that is a bad color to have. Yeah. Uh, from, say, this side. Uh, so you're looking inside of, a of a square room, uh, that looks like a little, a little office. Uh, boop. Ooh. Um, it has a, a wooden f floor and there's furniture around. You have no idea where any of this came from. Uh, but you can see multiple bookshelves, uh, a little table in the middle, a desk. Uh, it, it, it's clean. It doesn't look dusty. Um, it looks well taken care of. You can see in one corner uh, a, a ladder uh, that leads up to a trapdoor that this is what it's supposed to be. Um, and that looks to be the way to access the, the floors above. Uh, it's well lit, sort of like in a way that Jamil's tower was, uh, where there is no uh, obvious source of light. Well, this one's not half in sized. That's true. How this many... How many extra-dimensional office spaces am I going to see today? 
Is it extra dimensional? Oh, well, it's... It certainly came from nowhere. So... <clears throat> do we try to go in? Or... Can you remove it again? Uh, I mean, I probably wouldn't try it until we want to remove it. In case you can't get it back. But otherwise, we just build a tower. Well, you. I'm not sure that... Well, I was just going to glance at the amber and his hand. And just take a steadying breath and open the door. You walk into the room that you saw from uh, through the window. Uh, the temperature inside is pleasant. It's it's just right. So there are books around. Ah, there's there's some books uh, in uh, in these bookshelves. There's one that's open um, uh, on this little like almost almost like coffee table. Uh, there's some papers on the desk. Anything... Anything I recognize? Anything written by... Like, so is there handwritten papers here? Uh, yeah. You can place your minis in here if you'd like. Um, Pip sort of slides and... in, knocks on the door as he comes in. <laughs> you knock on the door and you step in. Uh... Let's just hide the bars. We don't need them. Uh, and uh, 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 Talix is, is the Squeak allowed to enter? Yes. Squeak feels no discomfort and no sign that he's not welcome in here. Um, and as you, um, Talix, you reach for those papers. There's there's two of them here on the desk. Uh, and you recognize the handwriting. You see your name at the top of one of the pages. Um, you can read this out loud. Oh my goodness. Alex, if you're reading this letter, it means you've managed to find my home away from home. When I first gave you the amber, I was hardly visiting this tower anymore. But ever since I've started to explore Lidaria, it's seen a lot more use. Illid is now yours. You'll find it always has the rooms you need. The kitchen is very nice. There are some books in the office. The bed is comfortable. And you've got to try the sauna. I have board games in the lounge. <laughs> an observatory on the top floor. And even an empty room I've yet to furbish. Perhaps you'd like to repurpose it. I left a small explanation of this tower's rules and behavior here as well. Enough about this place, you've probably... You're probably wondering where I've gone. I apologize for not keeping in touch. I'm the verge of an exceptional discovery, you see. A new theory about arcane and divine magic that would deeply change our understanding of the world and, most importantly, each other. I've traveled very far through Lodaria to find the evidence I need. I've learned so much, and, well, everything has gotten very complicated. There are a few issues that need to be resolved urgently, and until that's done, I'll be stuck on this side of the continent. Worry not, I am alright, but uh, even if I were to spend the rest of my life here, it would not be so bad. But I miss you, and Lolo. I hope life in Plurna is treating you well, and that you have found your own path. Arn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It bleeds through a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you miss your dad too, huh? He could totally beat up your dad. 
who's trying to have a tender moment. One tender moment. That's it. It's back on. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> well, uh... Professor, I suppose you're right. He, uh... He seems to be something of an arcane magic user himself, though he never... shared that with me. I mean, look at this. Your dad made this? Seems so. Wow. Your dad is really cool. The second paper beneath the letter is a set of instructions that details, as uh, the letter said, the rules of this tower. Um... Upon creation, uh, you can choose a number of rooms uh, to be present uh, among those that are available. The tower itself lasts up until 24 hours or earlier if dispelled. And with your current abilities, uh, you can summon it once per day. Uh, as long as you have uh, the ember, uh, of course. This, this all comes from the item. So it did not use a spell slot. It does not. Uh, however, the strength of your highest available spell slot determines the maximum number of rooms that you can summon at once. Uh, the major rule that Arian puts a lot of emphasis on is that this place cannot be used to store items. Anything left in the tower when the tower is unsummoned will permanently become part of the tower itself. And anything that is part of the tower and is ever taken out is destroyed. Don't leave the seed in here. <laughs> 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 Unless. Yeah, well, that would be a good way to destroy the seed and good to know for later. <laughs> <laughs> so that qualifies as anything left in here when the tower is dispelled? Mm hmm. Will become part of the tower? Mm. So you okay. can bring in, say, new furniture and leave it here and it will become part of the room that it was left in. But anything taken out from that moment onward will be destroyed. Yeah, it was like a weird memory issue that the devs had in making this. <laughs> kind of a hacky workaround. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go explore all the rooms. I'm, climb I'm running to the ladder. Tell me if you find the sauna! <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feeling room. I will. Um, the, the washroom is the room immediately above this one. Um, oh, part of the rules that you just read also says you can arrange it, I mean, whatever order you like. Uh, but this is how your, your first casting went, so it's the office and then the bathroom, uh, which is the room down here. Uh, it comes with a little area where you can wash yourself and a place to clean your clothes and a little toilet. And then oh, this, <laughs> yeah, this, this room is divided in half and when you poke your head through it is uh, a sauna. Nice. And it has everything it needs to actually get be, uh, be used. Now we're talking. <laughs> And yeah, I'll go up to the bedroom. Mm hmm Yeah, you continue up the ladder and uh, you find a uh, pleasant, cozy room. This one... Wait. There are wardrobes in here. Mm hmm What is the point? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a... That would be disastrous. Uh, they have, like, robes for the sauna. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a fireplace here and a little chest at the base like, of the bed. It's like every bad dream you had as a kid. <laughs> it would be exactly <laughs> like that. I'm ready for my big meeting. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I mean, Hold I'll on, just I'm... like look around and look at all of my dad's stuff. One second, I think we left Maya in the bedroom. Oh, right, she wasn't gonna, done eating. I'm gonna go free her. I'll get, no, I'll get her. You, you describe things to the others. <laughs> describe things to me. Um, okay. Checking the chests at the base of the of the bed and a couple of boxes, you know, like jewelry boxes in the room. Um, everything here is is empty. Um, each of these containers, and like we said, the closets don't actually have a, a whole lot of clothes in, in there. Uh, although there are some, uh, so some are meant in one closet. There is things that seem to be useful to to wear in the house. Just some some pajamas, some robes. Um, in the other closet, there are clothes uh, that look very used, very old, um, taken care of, but just uh, uh, some outfits clearly uh, used for exploration, uh, boots that are just worn down from all the walking that's been done in them. And it seems that this is a place where he's just preserving uh, some of the clothes that are uh, too old to be used anymore, but that he or it didn't seem to want to throw out. Hmm. I never knew him to be so sentimental. <laughs> yeah. For the brief time I knew him, he never... Uh... Well, he was always very practically minded, very busy. But this is... Uh... Oh. Did he enter this room? Or is it only like... You can come in if you... Oh, no, no, oh you're not I asking mean, me, sorry. I meant so, <clears throat> I meant so, fa uh, I meant so father. Like, can he enter it from wherever he is right now, or...? No, I don't think it's quite the same as... As Jamil's, uh magic it seems it just builds it wherever this is hmm if you have something that you don't ever want to lose you can technically just put it in here you just can't ever take it back out right that's makes this place good. yours As long as I have this. Hmm. That's a really good gift. So, the sun is here. Oh, you will like it. It basically sits there, and then you 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 pour water uh, water over these hot stones, and then it all gets really foggy and hot, and you sweat, and then you feel better after. <laughs> is it's that, is it some sort of ritual? Sure, like a ritual to cleanse you from exhaust. Just that. Matter. I'm going to peruse the books a bit more and just see <clears throat> sorts of things. Probably wouldn't be too surprised by what's on the shelves, but who knows? All right, Wait, you take a look. I'll get the sauna ready. I'm pretty sure that's from Oblivion. <laughs> Wait, really? There's, isn't that an Oblivion Gate emblem on that book? Oh my on god, you're shelf? right! Yeah. Oh no, that's probably copyrighted! Huh. <laughs> oh no, Bethesda's watching right oh, no. now. 
Oh, you're oh. Right. <laughs> Look at this sci-fi story my dad's reading. <laughs> Oblivion Gates, that's crazy. Uh, there is, uh, I guess of note here would be um, some handwritten notes about the, uh, the flora in Lidaria. <gasps> um, I can copy them into my own book. Yeah, that, that, that would be like the most practically useful that. And there's a few cookbooks. Um, a couple that have been uh, clearly written and purchased in, in, in the peninsula. Um, made by made by colonists but that involve the uh, the ingredients of the new continent uh, and there's uh, there's a lot of notes on the margins that are in Aryan's uh, um, handwriting uh, it, it seems like he has been trying to learn to um, to cook here hmm. you know uh Oh, does anyone here cook? I guess Tekka does to some extent, right? I can make some things. Just... I don't know how much his cooking's improved since last time I was with him, but uh, I'd be a little cautious about his notes on this particular subject. Unless you like to light your mouth on fire. <laughs> oh look, here's the recipe that uses that spice that we have. The amount recommended is just a really small pinch. <laughs> oh, Talos are just gonna kinda like... Just look over stuff like that and just kind of giggle, giggle to himself now and then. Kind of take the time reading his father's handwriting. Azimir and Brooke have disappeared somewhere in the washroom a while back. <laughs> um, fun folks will probably be perusing with Talix. Uh, is Pip interested in the sauna? Uh, I think Pip would be more interested in sort of looking over Talix's shoulder at the plant book and stuff. Okay, yeah. Uh, there is something for you to learn there as well. Oh. Yeah, maybe something on his ingredients? Figured the frog would want to be here, actually. <laughs> you, yes. you might wonder yeah. if... Because that's that's the same area of research that Pontifex is very interested in. Mm -hmm. That's what they were working on together. You might want to see if uh, Aaron had any. Yeah, the I figured that one paragraph in the letter about the Arcane and Divine Magic would have definitely got, gotten his attention. It'd be like he, he'd be checking through the books if, to see if there's anything here about that. Mm -hmm. Um, but there isn't. Oh. I didn't mean to build up like the suspense and then let you down. <laughs> anything that might help Pip find ingredients or anything like that? Uh, yeah, and would help him with the uh, um. Pip like, out pulls how to out use some them. of the things that he's collected uh, during his time in the jungle and starts to see if like he can make any connections as to what these things are that he's actually gathered. Um basically what, what I'm may be. What I, what I'm what I'm going to say is uh, that uh, um not right away but with uh more uh time spent in this tower you can learn uh, uh, a new recipe pip a new potion oh. recipe. Neat. So, how confident does Talix feel that he can do this again the following day? I know it was written that it should work, but... 
um, how confident it does you feel. Hmm. Okay, I guess he feels decently confident in himself today. As he should. I guess this can be a place for us to stay on on our nights out traveling. Can anyone bad get in? Hmm. I don't think there's any magical wards. In fact, this place probably draws quite a bit of attention. But as far as, you know, wild beasts and whatnot, should be safe from them. And the door has a lock on it. We should be a little cautious with how we use it. Still, it certainly beats sleeping in you know, a bag out in the open. Remember all the times it rained on us and we tried to build a shelter with our blankets? <laughs> I couldn't sleep in a tree those days. Hmm. I like it. Time will have to see cool. the, the kitchen and the game room for sure. What do you think, Tekka? <laughs> Words cannot describe. He's speechless. This shelter will draw attention. Our blankets did not. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> Remember, there is still someone chasing us. One time, they will come back. But, but if we could, if we could talk to Orm, maybe we could talk to them too. We were responsible for their partner. The loss of their partner. Words cannot make up for a loss like that. Can I stay here just for tonight, though? It is a gift from your father. It would be a dishonor not to show courtesy. So Alex was just gonna set his backpack and stuff down and grab a few more books and just stay at this desk for a while. Okay. Um, yeah, each of you can choose whether to sleep or in, uh, spend a night in the tower or outside where your, your camp is still there, has been built fully. Uh, some of you check out the sauna. And it is great. It is so great. Red uh, skin color is as red as his hair. Pip climbs inside of the chimney. Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he sleeps. They call to me. <laughs> And 
and um, whenever you're ready, you can take your next long rest, and we can move on to tomorrow. <clears throat> um, so where is everybody spending the night? Mm, I'm assuming we will still have watches, right? Uh, do you? Yeah, we should. I, I, I would at least. So I will, I mean, how many beds are in, is there one bed? Or there's one, one bed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I would probably accept for my watch, just take my, uh, what is it called, bed roll, put it somewhere inside. In the sauna. <laughs> I mean, I don't <laughs> think that's a good place to sleep after using it, but wherever there is space. Maybe also in this room. Where everyone is together then. Yeah. You can see out the windows. That totally works for a watch, right? Okay. Mm. Uh give me <laughs> give me your order. For the watch. Take it, take second. Alex will try to take first watch. Alex, well, I'll take this. Take, uh... Brooke. <laughs> and Kazimir takes a fourth. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'll get the perception check from the four of, well, the three of you and myself. Is Talix staying in the bedroom or the, the office? As soon as his watch is up, he's going to. Oh. Uh, he's going to take a bath and Ooh. actually go to the bedroom. Sleep in the bed. All right. You find Pip curled up in front of the fireplace. <laughs> We're all rather distracted by the comforts of the tower. <laughs> yeah, Brooke is dizzy from the sauna. I'm just going to roll a perception check for tech acid. Is oh, I rolled a 40. Oh, you did? What? Uh, not in TTS. Oh. But... Okay. Yeah. 14. Uh, one, so, do you want me to try to stream it? That would not fix my problem. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. I appreciate it, though. Wait, is that for Pip or for Squeak? Oh, that's for Pip. Okay. Squeak might hang out in the sauna, sleep in the sauna, actually. <laughs> it's the VIP be beach. <laughs> okay. So, uh. I'm just moving you all to the bedroom, I guess. Yeah. Wait. Oh no! I have accidentally carried over this. I didn't realize it wasn't locked. Yeah. There we go. So, um, Brooke. The Me? yes, you. Uh, the sauna was just so great that mm. uh, when you are woken up for your shift. Um, you just like you sit down in this chair um, and you're just so relaxed that you doze off a little bit instead of keeping watch and the next uh -oh. time the next time you open your eyes you um, your your nose is itching a little bit uh, and, and and you can't see the wall in front of you the the uh, fireplace ahead of you uh, instead you see something your entire vision is filled with pink and with yellow. Can I rub my eyes? Oh uh, yeah, you bring up your, your hand up to your face and you touch something soft that vibrates and pulls away from you. 
um, and you're, you're hearing this fluttering of wings uh, as you're looking at what, what seems to be an enormous moth uh, as big as your head and it's like it's covered in this in this fur um, that is pink and yellow and green in color um, it's its wings are fluttering as it uh, just hovers uh, at, at, at the uh, at your um, at the height of your eyes uh, it has this large um, golden colored antennae and uh, and big round black eyes. And then you sneeze. Is it still there after the sneeze? Uh, it, it it moved away a few feet away, but it's 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 looking at you. Hmm. I would like to slowly raise my arm and try to touch it. Um, you extend your arm, and the giant moth lands on your forearm. It's uh, uh, it, it's fluffy f legs uh, tickle your arm a little bit. Huh. That's interesting. Mm. Now that I can see again, I look around. I'm st I'm still in the room, right? Yeah. Does it look real? Is this most real or is this a dream? I'm not sure where I am. Uh, you're in the same room you, you dust okay. off in. Huh. Where did he come from? Um, rural perception check. Perception. Mm-hmm. Twenty. Okay. Um, yeah, that will do. Okay. Uh, this is the same room that you were in earlier, but the the trapdoor leading downward, uh, downward uh, it's, it's not there anymore. Hmm. Were there windows in this room? Yeah, uh, right? Yeah. Can I look outside? Outside, it's uh, um, still nighttime, but the uh, the sky is filled with these lights. It's like waves of green and golden light just washing over the sky. <clears throat> All right, are the other people next to me? Yeah, uh, everyone who's sleeping in the tower uh, is tech outside. Tekka would be sleeping on the ground floor of the tower. Okay. I'll just have you over here. Uh, so everyone but Tekka would be here. So just to get this right, the trapdoor is gone, so I technically couldn't even go down. Uh, right. So I'm stuck in this room? Yeah. Who's the closest next to me? Mm, Casimir. All right, I'll wake him up. Uh, he he stirs, he stretches, and just just mutters, mm, "What? What's up?" Is, <clears throat> is, is this real? Oh. And I hold up the moss. Is it? Oh, he sits up, looks at it, um, in like. Partial delight and partial uh, confusion. I'm. Uh, I, I don't know, Brooke. Is is anything real? Can I inside check? <laughs> sure. As you fucking with me, <laughs> I'm confused. He's fucking with you. Haha. Ha. All right. Um. Okay, since the moss is real, did the trapdoor go away over there? And I pointed our way out of this room. Uh, what do you mean the trapdoor went? Oh, the trapdoor is gone. What? How? 
hold on. And he like stands up and goes to the trapdoor and uh, um, well, where the trapdoor would be. Uh, and like just touches the floor and it's just wood. What the heck? Okay. Mm. Let me wake up Telex. <laughs> and I'll I, go I, over to the We bed. shouldn't have trusted this place. Why do we trust this place? I mean, the tower showed up out of nowhere and we just walk in and sleep? I'm pretty sure you can do it. Right? And I'll wake up Telex. Ah, uh, that... Everybody's waking up as like the conversation between Brooke and Casimir is like Ka Casimir is not using not not even using his indoor voice. Is uh, <laughs> everyone else is a sleep voice? Uh, Telix? Yeah. The trap the, the the trap door disappeared. Uh, what is that? I'm not sure. I think it was, but it was you here. Know what this is? Um, mm. Pip yeah. sort of stirs awake. And... Um, you have never seen a moth like this. It's the biggest one you've ever seen, and uh, um, that you're not. You you've seen normal moths, uh, both on Plurin and on Nadaria. Uh, but this this is unusual. Okay. What was Pip doing? Pip stirs awake and and looks at this moth, and he puts one finger on either side of his head, like antenna, and sort of wiggles them around, <laughs> and says, "Hi." <laughs> In moth. <laughs> Uh, Pip, you speak moth to the moth, and the moth doesn't even turn around. Mm -hmm. Pip gives a shrug. He's all out of ideas. I'm going to be honest. I think I kind of dozed off, and then I woke up to the... I... Can you maybe touch your stone and or your thing and then your amber? Sorry, not stone. That was pip. Um, touch the amber and if we can get out of here again. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, tell us, will you, yeah, take out the amber and I don't know, walk over to the corner, tap the ground with it. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically just um, and from the from the ember bursts outward upward a a, a shower of sparks colorful uh, warm takes you by surprise it almost yeah uh, they almost explode in your eyes what Oh, I try to touch the ground with my hand. You just feel the wooden floor. Do you think this has something to do with the moss? Um, I mean, I know Pip just tried, but I will, uh, I'm going to cast Speak with Animals anyway and see if I can figure out a better way of getting through to it mm -hmm. somehow. Um, so still still holding the, the Ember, um, you, you cast your spell and you, you feel that it doesn't take hold. Um, or rather it, it casts, but what you're trying to talk to doesn't seem to be an animal. At least that's the kind of feedback you're getting back from your magic. What was the... What was the name? Crap. Uh, the moth takes flight and lands on Talix's hat. 
Huh. What was the name that um, the Lady of the Lands told us? Her father. Ira? Yeah. I'll mention what? That. Ira? Are, are you a Rayra? A Rayra. Any reaction? Just no. Not particularly. The moth is chilling and starts munching on the hat. Oh no! Uh, I will try to pull it off my hat. I uh, yeah, you you detach the moth, uh, holding it by its it, its body is so pleasantly soft, um, and it just bats its wings. Maybe Well, we still have the windows. Can not can I open them? Oh uh, yeah, you open a window, you also see that the sky is is beautiful and glowing with these colors um, that, that you've never seen before. Um, you look down at the ground, you're... Um, the last time you checked, you were on the third floor. Uh, but you, you look down at the ground and you're actually on, on the ground floor. The the uh, the grass outside is just within reach. I suppose we could climb out. Say again? Aren't we on? Seem to have moved. Where's Tekaz? I'm gonna stick my head out the window and look up. Uh, the what? Used to be a tower, just has one floor now. There's just a rooftop sticking out from directly above you. Oh no. Uh, I think Tekka's part of the tower permanently now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, he's now furniture. He's... <laughs> he's bound to it forever. Oh, uh, this is bad. Uh, Pip is going to try and snap Squeak to himself. Uh, where did you leave him last? The sauna. Okay. Snap your fingers. Nothing happens. Yeah. Pip starts to freak out at this point. He starts he, he's snapping like, your fingers again and again and again and again. Snapping his fingers until like what? there is a there is a pop next to you and uh, uh, a little ah uh, and and a loud huh? clanking of something hitting the ground. Um, as, as Queek shows up along with a little metal cage. And he's inside of it. Oh, oh no. not this again. <laughs> okay, wait. This means... Wait, what does this mean? It means we're in the land of dreams and I'm not allowed to be here. But I... But I wouldn't be here. Well, you were there last time as well, but you just couldn't remember. Despite we... the floor being made of solid wood, it's beginning to bend downward. It feels like it's melting beneath your feet and you're starting to uh, feel yourself get sucked down. The moth takes flight um, with... Um, no, sorry. Um, the, the moth just takes flight um, if Talix will let go of it. Sure. Um, and flies out of the open window. Let's follow it. Alright. But what is opening? The, the floor is bending into itself? Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's starting to feel... And now I can change the music. Uh, it's starting to feel like uh, quicksand. Like your feet are just sinking into it. 
Yeah, Patrick uh, is going to try and not be in that. Yeah, let's... Oh, no. Okay, Talix is going to try to pull himself out of the window. Yeah, I can help. Uh, and I'm already at the window. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. You you climb out of the window and uh, um, as you step out, it feels like your um, uh, your your mind is sort of like making a connection. You don't really recognize your surroundings anymore. Uh, the campsite that should be right here, it's 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 gone. Uh, your tent is gone. Your bedroll is there, uh, but it's it's a wrong color. Uh, Pippin. Hurry, everyone! We would, yeah. I, I would help people get out. Yeah, Pip and the cage out. are just starting to sink further and further into the ground, and like Brook, you just grab both of them. Uh, Squeak was almost out of sight by the time you grab it, uh, one of the bars no. off no. of his cage. You just pull it up. Okay, move, move, and then. Throw the cage out of the window. <laughs> 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 and then slowly raise Pip out of the window. What about the professor? Is he fast? Does he need help? Um, he, he's, Is he full of sand? He's nimble. He was not sleeping in his armor. Uh, <laughs> um, slippery. <laughs> He's slippery. He just grabs all all of his stuff and then climbs out with with Brooke's help. Okay, then I'm out as well. And then I pick up the cage again. Where's, I'm sorry. Where's Tekka? Tekka? <laughs> I mean, I was about to say he is the one t keeping a watch and not sleeping, but that was supposed to be me. So, uh, you mean he's here somewhere? Yeah. Uh, the moth lands on Talix's head. Oh, wait! If we're in the dreamland, right? Should make some moss fly and we follow it. You know, like last time with the animals. Does it seem to want to go anywhere? Not really. It's just resting on your head. Munching on your hair. I don't have a hat anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it already ate your head. Next. I, I, I figured you were like holding it. <laughs> oh. I guess we have to find our own path. All right. I'm just going to look around and see if there's anything, any features in any particular direction. Uh, everything you look, it's just flat plains, not a tree in sight, not a mountain, not a no river. Um, the the sky glowing above you is uh, uh, re that, and the the tower behind you are kind of the only things you can use to get an idea of which direction you're facing and whether you'd be walking away or towards the tower. Uh, but the entire landscape is otherwise pretty... It's, it's barren. There's just grass yeah. everywhere you look. And what about you're, stars? Uh, there, are, there are stars, yeah. And the moons? Uh, and the moons. And uh, uh, the more you look around, the more you're all beginning to feel this uh, strange feeling of being lost uh, not only do you physically not know where you are in the world but uh, there's just this 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 emotion uh, that's lingering in your heads and in your chests um, and and with every passing second um, it's it's almost like mounting panic and a longing for finding Somewhere or uh, someone, rather. We were going west. If I. Attacker was going west too. If we 
can find out where West is. Do I recognize the stars? Alex, you don't. Okay, I'm just going to try my best to use whatever intuition I have and pick a direction, I guess. Okay. Um, maybe I can see if that direction will be good or not. Um, well, hold on for just one second. And Pip is gonna... Does he still have his pouch on him? Which one? Uh, the rock pouch. Uh, Pip, you, you, you reach for your trusty rock pouch. It's not there. This place is hell. What about my amber? Um, you have it. You were tapping it on the ground earlier. Great. Pip, what do you need exactly? Um, uh, sticks. Um, some, some sticks and some, some rocks. I, I don't have my backpack, do I? Um, you left the tower in a bit of a hurry? Is there a tree nearby? No. Is it just like barren field? Just a yeah. barren field. The 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 feeling of panic is just really mounting in each I'm of your going hearts. To, okay, I'm going to grasp the amber. And I'm going to try to cast a spell. I'm going to try to cast plant growth. Third level spell. Oh. It creates an overgrowth of plants. I would imagine it would include like bushes. Things with sticky structures. All normal plants in a 100 foot radius become thick and overgrown. So the way I've... The way I've always seen it played is that it means there's grass around you. So you would have overgrown grass. Hmm. You can't get like a bush to blossom uh, where there isn't one. Although in this case it does happen. Um, because it's dream. So... You, you've never done this spell before, but you're just, you, you just trust that uh, uh, this, this ember is going to uh, come to you to your rescue. Uh, and so you, you, uh, you just focus on the area around you, uh, and uh, it just takes a moment, and suddenly the grass is growing taller. And it's not just grass, there's bushes and small shrubs that uh, grow in a matter of seconds into trees. And the grass keeps growing and growing and growing and uh, it's reaching up to your knees and then to your belly and then it's beginning to swallow you whole. Okay, that's a lot of sticks. <laughs> it's it's so thick. I... Uh, you feel each blade of, gra of grass just uh, beginning to wrap itself around each of your limbs, uh, and uh, the grass pulls you down into a, a, a darkness that seems to be bottomless, and you all wake up. Alex, you don't remember anything, any of this. Uh, but you're in the tower. The trapdoor is there. The site outside the window is normal. Uh, Brook, you check, and the ground is three floors down. Squeak is no longer in a cage. Most oh. of you are sweating a little bit. And Talix, you have this lingering feeling of anxiety, but... I mean, you're otherwise fine. But you just slept through the night. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Did something make a ruckus or something? Why am I awake? What time is it? Is it still dark? Uh, it night's dawn. 
Uh, the sun has risen perhaps maybe half an hour ago. Looking out of oh, the window. It's too early. Did something fly through the window? Hmm. For God, you don't. You want to stay awake? <laughs> or do you want to take the last few bits and then I'll fill you in? We had a dream and it was a... Okay. <laughs> Just sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Goes through everything. And I felt so lost and scared. And and then you made plants grow everywhere and then everything got dark. There was a moth. I don't know what any of it means. A very colorful moss. <laughs> um, Casimir is freaking out a little bit and uh, um, confused at the idea that you guys seem to be just perfectly not as freaked out as he is about just having had a shared dream. Uh, How long have you been in Ladoria, Casimir? Why are you suddenly <laughs> questioning me? I thought maybe it was just something that happened here. Uh, nothing that's ever happened to me, no? Have you ever been to the Dorema Tree? You haven't, right? No, I'd uh, heard of it, but... I'm gonna double check that the seat is safe and secure. Uh, all of yeah. your all of your belongings that were missing earlier, they're all back. Uh, the seed is there. The uh, people are reunited with your rocks. Oh. But yeah, when we visited the Dreamers Tree, something similar but different happened. So I'm gonna check on Tekka. And Pip just goes down to make sure he's still here. <laughs> Tekka has <laughs> not been deleted from existence. <laughs> Tekka, there was a moth, and then it was uh, and then the planes, and there was nothing, and then there we got scared. And then <laughs> Telex made plants grow, and then it was dark, and we woke up, and you're still here, and you're not gone forever as part of a tower. Pip, Pip, everything is as it was yesterday. Seems you have had quite the dream. If that's what it was. How about everyone else? Yeah, we all had the same dream. Except you, I guess? Hmm. Just something in that room? Sadly, maybe that is not part of my path, but maybe this tower will guide me on my mission one day. Speaking of that, Pip, we need to talk. We are at a crossroads. What do you mean? Uh, yeah, and Tekka will start moving up uh, the ladder through the trap door to the other floor. Where do we go from here? What do we do when we are back in town? Mm. Well, we have the show. We, I would like to see if the uh, other fur book is still there. <clears throat> and then we say we're coming back to Orm, right? And he tries to think we have to do the list of Pip. 
We need to find your family. And the Rayra. Yes. There are many things. Personal and collective. Do you remember why we went to that jungle? Yes. We must speak with you, Tarava. We clear their home of metal for it to be threatened to be laid by metal again. I have not been able to rest easy knowing this. How do we change the will of the gnomes? Well, didn't... Wasn't it said that whatever they're doing to get that metal was hurting Lidaria, right? They're on making powder, yes. Yes. The so, word of the wolf. Well, we probably shouldn't mention the wolf to them. And we certainly can't fight it. Well, the gnomes might have some respect for the wolf. They're not the Jade Alliance. Yeah, true. But uh, they probably wouldn't believe it coming from us. And Grangina said she didn't want anything to do with that, huh? <sighs> I will go see the Atarava while those that will can join the magic festivities or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and we join back find our path forward you're you're going on your own you can go with if you wish but I will gain nothing from whatever competition display of skill will be shown magic is not for me I think it's only fair if I go with you, Tekka. As a translator, and... Oh. Do you need someone to protect you, or do you think I will probably bring more problems than help? I mean, in the end, I killed one of those birds. Oh. Or two? I don't know anymore, but... I think some things can be forgiven. We are to give them news and a premonition of things to come. You probably want to leave immediately, right? Once we're back in Simlilon? Unless something again happens in that town. Okay. Something uh, happen when we arrive. Yeah, I... You know what? If you want... If you want to go with the Eitarawa, I think you're better at communicating with them than me. And leaving the professor completely by himself. Even though Orm isn't after us anymore. I'm not sure if that is the best idea. So I could stay with him. Okay. I could at least give you guys a way of communicating between us. We could go with you. Then are we fine with this? Not staying at us a group? It's not forever, right? All we are doing really is waiting. I think it's good if we branch out and do our own things. I might even have some personal business of my own to attend to for just a bit. We have many days. We should take some time, do the things important to us.
and if we can gather information. Then we take a few days. Then we find our next move off the peninsula. Okay. Yeah. And in the meantime, I'm sure we'll grow to be good pals, my fellow horned friend. <laughs> We will see. All right. You're muted. Time. All I said was all right. Ready and break. <laughs> Tech and Brooke start bolting off. <laughs> I go now. <laughs> uh, Eighty you, feet per round. Each of you, you double check, you triple check that you didn't leave leave anything in the tower. Check one more time, and then you step out. Um, Alex, you get you get uh, uh, a feel for the magic within the the ember, uh, and you take a deep breath. And uh, um, with ease, you dispel this building, uh, the ground, the grass returning where it was taken from. Uh, and by the time the tower is, has disappeared, there is absolutely no sign that it was ever there, and that any part of the landscape was disturbed. You pick up what uh, uh, you still had lying around of your campsite, and you resume heading uh, westward. Oop. What a cool tower. This cool music. I love this music. Oh, the music fine. is gone. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, as you're no longer rushing uh, to cover the distance between uh, um, between the, the colony and uh, uh, the the other tower, um, you end up having to rest one more time in between here and there. Uh, and you make it uh, to Steam Leelon on the 14th, the day immediately before the summer solstice. You arrive uh, early in the morning and uh, things... I don't know why I bothered to put it on this music. Uh, things have um, changed uh, a tiny bit from the last time you were here. Um, I'm sorry, Pekka, you can't go. Things change. <laughs> um... Uh, some of the towers that uh, were floating in the sky um, last th the last few times you were here, um, they are no longer in the same location <laughs> in the air, uh, but it's sort of like being pushed away so that right in the very center of, of the skies above Simlielon, there is a new... Um, kind of construction uh, that that wasn't there before. Uh, what from below uh, looks like almost like a, a an enormous sort of disc, um, almost perfectly round shaped, and it's a little bit tilted to one side. And uh, as you're approaching the colony, you can see that it's slowly moving, slowly rotating in place uh, until there is a point where it's completely uh, perpendicular to the ground and you're beginning to see what you perceive to be the top part of it and it looks like you're you're looking at the uh, construction of something that looks like a, a floating arena hey professor it's like yours floating disc oh it is 
So like by by the time you arrive in the actual colony, it's sort of like facing like this. And then, you know, it just continues over time. There's a moment where it's completely upside down. That seems like, unpleasant. Like a Pokemon ghost stop. You spin it. Yes. Get... <laughs> like a Pokemon ghost stop. Uh, um, how this do city people is... stay standing on that? Professor, you I don't think this is a good idea anymore. <laughs> I imagine a Pontifex is just excited to go. Uh, and the city is bustling with uh, with activity. Um, and besides besides the ah, there it oh. is. <laughs> besides the difference in uh, the the location of the towers and this new uh, construction. Yeah, floating in the middle of it. It is uh, um, otherwise just the same colony that uh, uh, you left last time. And uh, uh, as you step in, there are... Oh, actually, let me look at your character sheets. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Okay. Na da 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 da. Sure thing. Okay. Um... Casimir is the first person to point it out, uh, um, but uh, you, you all notice it's hard to miss uh, as you're already looking up at the sky where the uh, where this arena is, um, flying uh, basically in between you and it. Uh, you see a very large bird um, that you recognize as being a, a red beak, and you've never seen one anywhere near uh, a, a colony uh, and this one just flies and then flies lower down away from you disappears somewhere behind a set of towers and you lose sight of it uh, we should maybe go after that Alice is gonna run off in that direction. Oh uh, yeah, yeah you, uh you all do. You enter the city proper and you start heading in the general direction where you lost uh, sight of uh, uh, a a red beak apparently. Um, and y you have already arrived at a moment where the city is particularly busy, uh, and uh, uh, the the roads are bustling with activity. There's uh, there's market stalls everywhere, and as you're walking through one of the main plazas, uh, it's so crowded uh, that you're kind of you, you end up sort of like stuck in the middle of it, uh, and, and people are arranged uh, in a semicircle uh, around around something. Um, you kind of force your way through, uh, uh, trying to move, trying to move past the crowd uh, um, uh, until you get you get to the point where you can see what's going on. And it seems like um, there is a there is a half elf man um, holding a, a lyre in his hands, and uh, you see a, a burst of light as something, um, it, a wyvern. Uh, appears and it's made of light. Um, it's it's visibly an illusion and it's it's beautiful. Uh, it's very detailed. You can see just the, the rippling muscles in the wyvern's legs as it uh, flaps its wings and uh, the the man is narrating something and uh, um, the the illusion moves with his story. Uh, it seems like you caught just right the tail end of. Uh, um, of the story he's telling, and uh, um, the uh, around that moment, the the wyvern in question just uh, bursts into sparks of light that slowly descend to the ground, and the people seem to to be enjoying the show. One, it's a bard. <clears throat> well, let's go. Watch. You're a. You're doing what? I didn't hear you. Sorry, Dennis. Are we already directly there, or? 
Uh, pretty, yeah, you're, you're kind of in uh, the middle of the plus at this point. You can either stop to listen to what he's saying, or you can just keep chasing after the bird. Wait, was the bird an illusion? Uh, you haven't quite gotten to the place where you saw the bird. Oh. This is oh, like so on blew, the way. We passed him. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I thought that's what you were communicating. Okay, never mind. My bad. Um. Okay, then I guess we gotta keep going. Yep. You push through the crowd, just you know, saying "excuse me, excuse me," and um. Eventually make it past uh, uh, the the plaza, and uh, you just keep going through the various roads until you reach roughly the place where you lost sight of the bird. Um, you can all roll an investigation check. Investigation. Uh, Sid, are you able to roll any dice? Oh, oh, on the table even. <laughs> Neither Pontifex nor Casimir are paying particular attention, apparently. Um, oh wait, his bonus is really high though. Hold on, eh. Oh yeah, his bonus is really high. Actually, a, a fine roll. Um, yay. Da, 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 da. Looks about right. Um, with your with your combined efforts, as you spread out a little bit and look around, uh, um, you notice a few people that, are, that were like pointing at the sky, and it seemed to also be kind of surprised by what you also must have seen. Uh, and you ask around, and you regroup and you share information. You find you, you keep moving forward uh, until uh, you find this near the uh, southwestern edge of the colony, uh, where you find uh, that a small group of Itarava, there's five of them, are here. Um, their red beak companions uh, um, uh, sitting down, laying down next to them. Um, and you recognize two of these people. Uh, you recognize the, the young girl uh, that attacked the ship you were on the first time you came to Simlielon, and then you met her uh, later again, uh, along with, uh, um, by, by your side is the old man uh, that you know to be her uh, grandfather. These are Badra and pa Pedrick. That's convenient. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Talos will eagerly greet them. Do you remember us? Um, the uh, well, Pedrak waves, and um, Roger just doesn't look particularly happy. Uh, either you caught her like in. Uh, Was well, she's in a bad mood, or she's not happy to see you, or she's not happy to be here. Uh, but she she sighs and, and glances at him, and then, uh, like she did the first time uh, uh, you met them, uh, she speaks for him and says, Of course we remember you. We are very pleased to see you again. And to see that you have survived. It means a lot, the gesture of you coming to this colony. I'm sure that's a difficult track for you to make. Yeah, it's Grandpa's idea. He said that uh, we should formally establish peace with your people and whatever. Have you met with any of the officials here? Yeah, we've been shown around by your leader. Mm. Which leader exactly? Uh. <laughs> is it the, the governor here? The, or 
Is he called a governor? What is he called? Uh, called just else. you. You ask her to clarify, and uh, she she says Morthelia, Morthelian, and yes, that's a governor, Simlielon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't even remember the name at first, but a different that are in the group uh, uh, reminds her. Oh, this is wonderful news. Um, oh, so the one who stares. We know. Uh, the... Well, the news isn't entirely happy. They they all look at each other. What? What do you mean? We uh, we know it's gone. Unfortunately, well, as you might know, like your own, like the people of Lidaria, the people of Plurna are many as well, and even while you may have made peace with these folks, um, there is another race of Plurnans who seeks to move into the jungle, and they will be quite hard to dissuade. Um, he, as the, the group looks at each other, they, um, they don't speak to one another, but you've, you've experienced this before. You, you understand how there is always this, they have a method of exchanging information between each other without uh, uh, using the spoken word. Uh, you see them gesturing occasionally. Um, uh, Pajak in particular seems to be involved uh, heavily in whatever conversation is going on right now. Um, until the, until Vajra uh, feeds you again and says, well, they can try not going to make it. Our people I... are going to move back in our old home. And uh, if your kind wants to try to stop us, they can try and they will fail. In the conversation, yeah. like last time, it's taking, it's taking place in the Taran language and... Uh, um, not only do you have uh, um, Alex who can translate between you guys, but also this time, um, the Orm, your book, has the ability to comprehend uh, Etaran. Oh yeah. And so, like, the 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 rest of you are following both thanks to Talix and to the book itself, just uh, duty, uh, uh, dutifully translating everything that's being said back and forth. And whenever you guys speak, Talix translates for you, of course. <clears throat> How good are you with the people from Simlilon? Oh, good. Well, we got here this morning and... Uh, People don't like to see us, and they definitely point and stare. But... Uh, the, your leader took us around and made a speech, and uh, uh, is getting your pointy-eared people to get used to our presence. And there's this, uh, there's this thing that's coming up in... Like, uh, tomorrow, and uh, uh, Grandpa said that uh, uh, taking place in that event would be a good way to show everyone that we're here and we are on good terms now, so that's happening. You are a magic user, aren't you? Yeah, well, me and Grandpa. This might be a great way for us to... To learn one another. Your magic might be very similar to the magic they use here. Though there's a lot we don't know about your magic yet. Well, I guess you'll get to see. <clears throat> Look, the, uh, the people... 
I want to clarify from the front. Uh, I believe you have every right to that channel. I sympathize with you. The people who seek to move in, they're not like these... They're not exactly the same as these pointy-eared people you've come to know here. They're... The most determined and warlike currently of our of our people and feared by many of us you might have encountered some of their weapons and Talix will describe a gun these small warriors yeah we know them they kill from a distance with the sound so, of thunder. That is unfortunately what is coming. Our group here, we want to find a way to to prevent this peacefully. But you might know their reputation. It's difficult once they set their mind to something. Talk them out of it. <clears throat> Isn't the rail track also supposed to be going to Simlilum? Isn't that part of the idea? So you think we could do something here? That's why I asked if, if how good they are with the people here in Simlilum, right? That's a good point. Maybe the governor is a way through. There is another hidden private conversation between the group uh, um, as Vajra mentally sighs and uh, addresses you and says, The way I see it is that if the storm is coming, we will brave it. If the Thunder Masters are going to try to take our land, we'll fight them back. But Grandpa is willing to discuss the issue with your leader. Tell your Grandpa I appreciate him. Yeah. Um, Phaedrek gives you a nod. Curiosity, uh, who's been translating for you folks in here? With the governor. Um, a woman with pointy ears and uh, pink hair. Pink hair. Do I know this? Do I know someone with pink hair? Um, I'm, I'm wondering if it's the silver claw people that I met, but if it's not, then... Yeah, you're, you're thinking back to that group and you don't remember somebody with pink hair? All right. Wait, no. Sorry, I take it back. There was a person with pink hair in that group, right? But, oh, let me double check my notes. Honestly. Sorry. Um. No. Sorry, I just I need to open a different document. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll see if I remember nope. that later. The, uh, <laughs> okay. Nope. The woman you're thinking of was blonde. Yeah, the one I talked to. I didn't remember having pink hair, but yeah. Okay. Well, um, I want to assure you that we'll do everything we can to support your cause. And we'll continue to try to convince the gnomes to find another way through. In the meantime, if there's anything else we can do to help you, please let me know. Well, if you could fight and defeat <laughs> the one who stares, then I'm sure you can take on the Thunder Masters. Uh, Grandpa says this is not a request. <laughs> They could okay. be. 
Well, we'll keep that in mind. In the meantime, uh, I wish you the best of luck with the tournament, and I hope it's a culturally enriching experience for you. He just looks annoyed. <laughs> she does not look excited about this development. Uh, I figure Pontifex probably is. And I remember last time you really wanted to kick her butt. Uh, so I imagine that the idea that he might have a chance to do so in front of an audience and without uh, anyone being mad about it is probably great for him. <laughs> That's my Pontifex. Could be fun. <laughs> It'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else you'd like to talk uh, with the Tarava about? All right. Um, does this change your plans? <laughs> <laughs> you guys were starting to talk about splitting the party, go talk to the Tarava, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, we probably stay as a group. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we can still. Yeah, we might not leave this city, but like over these next, I guess, yeah. couple days or however long. Uh, like, Talix will probably want to watch. Whatever, either the Atarva or, of course, Pontifex, and maybe is Pip performing, competing. I'm sorry, I yawned when you said something. Are you are you it. competing in the tournament? Uh, <laughs> I don't think Pip was planning on it. Okay, well, Talos will watch whenever one of us or the Atarva competes. Mm -hmm. You you probably need more spell slots to <laughs> compete in such a thing. Um, I would probably watch as well, at least when Pontifex competes. Or okay. whenever the group goes as a group. Okay. And Basically, you, know, you just have... in case someone needs emergency healing, I'll be ready. <laughs> All right. So uh, today is a full day of downtime. Uh, basically, if you'll be waiting until uh, the tournament tomorrow, uh, Pontifex needs to go sign up, and that's, that's going to be a thing. Hmm. I would take a look for the fur box then if he's still around so ask Caillou I guess mm -hmm. Kyle did. yeah did you end up meeting him before nope okay they were supposed to come in three days and then we decided to leave <laughs> oh no well, if you but I'm pretty sure they were supposed to stay a bit as well so I don't know. we'll see Here, we Talix will hand you a leaf. Uh, if you if you find him, let me know. You know what to do. Oh, okay. And uh, Talix will go meet with his silver claw, or go to their place and try to arrange a meeting of some sort. Okay. What's everyone else doing? Uh, let's just do Talix's thing right away. Because oh. I don't know if uh, on, on the chance that we play this Sunday, then um, you would you would be missing that. Uh, sure. So let's uh, uh, let's just get to that, and uh, uh, it is not going to take too long. Uh, you know where to find the silver claw. Uh, what the silver claw uh, guild <laughs> uh, at this point? Uh, uh, let me just put back uh, Simeon's music. Was that a red beak? Uh <laughs> They're attacking! I can God. hear skinny pigs! No, what it's very cute! What is happening? Cute. Skinny pigs. Yeah. Oh. They sound a lot like birds, don't they? They do. They sound like parakeets. I don't even know what they're complaining about. <laughs> oh, they're just happy to, to get some attention. Too much. Uh, I feel like I had the building marked. Oh yeah, there it is. You did. Silver clock. Da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, you approach one of the many towers, uh, Talix, on on your own. Um, and, is it on the ground? Uh, yes, this one is on the ground. Uh, as you step step in, it's sort of like it. It feels like a. Um, 
uh, a, a somewhat uh, normal looking building there's just this uh, uh, lounge area at the entrance with with couches and a small desk um, and stairs heading uh, upward uh, and your, your attention immediately snaps to a pink haired elf woman um, <laughs> she just it is just a shocking pink. It just really gets your attention uh, as, as soon as it enters your, your vision. It's very long, too. Um, she wears a, a pair of her round glasses balanced on the tip of her nose. Uh, and she's in the middle of talking to someone. And yeah, her while her appearance is pretty uh, attention-grabbing, so is her voice. Uh, her, her indoor voice is... A little louder than most. Um, well, tell us to just wait until she's not in a conversation with someone and then go up and make introductions. Um, hello, I... I've been looking to meet with the Silver Claw for some time. Uh, my name is Talix Moyer. Oh, hi! Hello, good, good morning! I, I am Zapartil. She'll just shake your, your hand. Um, let me spell it for you. It's a pleasure to meet you! Uh, what, what can I help you with? Well... I've... We've encountered... A group of... Your, uh, well, a group on some sort of excavation a long time ago, and they sort of invited me to work with you. Oh, oh, <laughs> good. I thought for a moment that you were about to try to register a complaint, but it's good to know that they haven't been causing trouble. Uh, uh no, you... we probably caused the trouble. <laughs> you did? Uh, goodness, what happened? Oh, that's a long story. Okay, you don't have to tell me. Good. Unless you uh, want to. In which case, I would love to listen. Well, there's a sort of question I'd like to pose first. Uh, I believe... Some of you might have worked with my father before. Aaron Moyer? Um... You... You don't need an inside check just to see her, like her, her eyes widening in recognition. So she seems, uh, um, well, she she has seemed pretty excited about everything so far, but particularly to hear the name, she just nods vigorously. Why, well, yes, yes, I've I've known him, I've met him. How is he doing? Oh, still working as hard as ever. Working, yeah. Where? where? He hasn't come here in a long time. I told him to, to share his findings, and I, I it is starting to look like he does not mean to do so. Well, somehow he's wound up stuck on the other end of Ladaria. Western stuck? Ladaria. Like, like he was digging in some ruins and it collapsed over him, and now he's forever buried within the new continent? Uh, because that would be a story. I would say probably not. Um, though I don't know for sure. It's been a while since I've heard from him. But... <laughs> In any case, uh, how long has it been since you've heard from him exactly, out of curiosity? You wish to know exactly. Um, she'll, like, just check into her purse and take out a little a little book and just start flipping through the pages and uh, um the more she flips the more pages she seems to go through she should have gotten from one end of the cover to the other by now but it seems like it's it, it's a really strange feeling she just keeps going and going and going and going and there's a moment where you actually are beginning to wonder if maybe reality is falling apart around uh, around you and you pinch yourself wondering if this is what a dream would would be like 
Uh, and this goes on for like an almost a full minute until she stops on a particular page uh, and she says, it has been 10 years, two weeks and three days. Oh. Wow. Um, okay. So, his expedition into Eastern, Eastern, sorry, Western Ladaria, was that sponsored by the Silver Claw? No, but I tried. I really tried. I told him that uh, I had full faith and full confidence in whatever it was that he wanted to do, but he said, no, 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 I must do this myself. This is different. This has nothing to do with the guild. Do you know that he worked with Chamuel Fleetfoot? No? Did he? Why, that's fascinating. The two of them must have made such incredible discoveries. Such as... She pauses, waiting for you to fill her in. Well, I don't know the full extent of it, though I do know he apparently had an interest in Ladorian magic. Um, anyways. She makes a, she starts flipping back through the pages until eventually she reaches one where she starts taking notes. I myself uh, was hoping to go in the direction he went. Past the peninsula. Have you sponsored any expeditions along those lines? Um, roll an inside check, Alex. All right. As uh, as as a, as a far deal says. Well, as you know, we are not allowed to touch anything beyond the peninsula, so of course not. No, no, we have not. It feels like a lie to you. Not particularly very well concealed. It's more like, this is what she has to say. Well, we're not allowed to take anything, but surely to study and collect information. Is that a problem? Well, as long as we don't dig up any ruins or graves or touch any stone that we find. Or at the very least, put it back where it was. I see. You know, the, the curious thing about Ladari is that these rules are not written anywhere, and there is no uh, entity that governs over the continent. Uh, so, you know, as long as nobody knows that a stone has been moved. An nope. entity... Mm -hmm. Comparable to the Jade Council, or comparable to something comparable else? to uh, if, even if just uh, sure, the Jade Council is uh, one such entity, and the Moon Watch is another, but uh, to our knowledge, there is no such thing as even a, a proper country anywhere on the Daria. And so, what borders are there? Who establishes and upholds laws? It's all rather. Every, every settlement tends to, uh, to police itself. Along those lines, what do you know of the Nahadra? Mm. Alex will share his notes. A race of people that seems to have banished the the Hitaro? Is all of this new to you? At this point, she just gestures for you to, to sit down on one of the couches, and so does she, uh, facing you across from uh, from across the little uh, coffee table. Um, 
as she she just seems ready to have a whole conversation about this, basically. Uh, and she says, Well, we do have knowledge of uh, uh, some ancient race of uh, Lidarian people that, uh, as you said, are responsible for uh, exiling the Atara to this peninsula. You know a lot about Lidaria, definitely a lot more than the common folk would. Well, we've been taken to some interesting places recently. But the Atara still refuse to leave the peninsula. To refer to the Nahadra as an ancient race, it seems like something of them must remain. The fear remains. If the Nahadra are still alive, then we have yet to find evidence of this. But that would be quite exciting! Have you found any of their machinery or constructions? We have found two. Two machines. You must show me something of them. Well, notes, anything. She'll like get up for a little bit and come back. Um, she presents a sketch of oh, no. what you very much recognize as the one who stares. It's, um, it, it, it fits. Um, oh, Austin has to go. No. All right. Continue um, without me. Yes, it will just be like an extra 10 more minutes. Alright, bye. Okay, bye, Austin. You guys are bye -bye. amazing. Thank you for the session. Thanks bye. for being here. Um, yeah, she presents a sketch you recognize as the one who, who stares, and then she presents a second one that looks a lot like the one who stares, but you can see some some differences in uh, in the construction itself. This one looking uh, comparatively uh, a little bit a little bit. Um, like the proportions are different, uh, and the the head uh, um, of this creature is not uh, uh, the one of. Uh, I'm just trying to find my notes really quickly, but I can't find it. Scroll, 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 scroll. There it is. Um, so comparatively, where the one who stares seem to be um, built to resemble uh, a part humanoid and part a lion creature, uh, this other one that you're looking at instead has these these uh, uh, stripes uh, that are that are built into its back. Um, and they, they, they are sort of like a relief. Uh, instead of being painted, they are additional plates of metal uh, that are built onto its back. Um, so it has a more tiger-like appearance. And it is just a little bit smaller comparatively. Well, Talus will definitely copy notes. Well, I suppose... When it comes down to it, I was hoping I could, uh... I could work for you. You could start wor working for us right away. We have the forms. It doesn't take too long to fill them out. I, uh... She's already getting up to get them. Places a particularly thick stack of papers on the table. I'm eager for an opportunity to uh, 
we share knowledge and maybe learn more about your own operations as well. Um, I just you're a little quiet again. I didn't I didn't catch oh. what what Talix is saying. I'm eager for the opportunity to share knowledge and in turn maybe learn a bit more about your own operations. <clears throat> it's very hot in this room. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's that's great, wonderful. Should I should I leave you with with this? Certainly. Um. But well, no. I, no need to leave. Unless I'm keeping you from something. Well, this conversation so far has been delightful. She sits back down. So, what sorts of, um... What sorts of peoples are involved in these expeditions of yours? Sorts of people? Uh, the, the majority of uh, uh, our members are elves. We share a love for, for mystery and the world and uncovering the mysteries of the world. But there's probably some sort of a... Uh... Well, someone has to pay the bill at the end of the day, right? Are you wondering who is sponsoring us? Sure. Well, the Silver Claw was funded uh, right here in Simlielon, and we do have the blessing and uh, the finances of the governor available to us. The guild itself is pretty new, but um, we used to exist in, in different forms uh, previously. When Arin was still around, the Silver Claw wasn't a thing yet, but uh, we, there were already plenty of people on uh, on Ladaria working on uncovering great secrets. In fact, the last uh, uh, expedition that Arian did before he left for good was just east of here. I might like to see this place. If it's directions that you'd like, uh, I can provide them to you. Um, and she she describes to you, and she even points on a map, uh, pretty much exactly the path that you just took. Uh, not all the way to the, uh, the, ta the, the, the doorway that leads to the tower, but all the way to the place where you happened to spend the night the first time you summoned the Orion's Tower. I see. Did he happen to tell you anything about the place? Well, I was... I was with him on that particular expedition. And uh, it was a very interesting one. We were approached by some uh, locals of a, of, of a rare um, kind that uh, I've hardly ever seen since. And it is a uh, after our encounter with them that um, that uh, Mr. Moyer seemed to get some some kind of idea. He got all excited about it and said he had to pursue it and he had to tra travel further into Ladaria to figure it all out. What sorts of locals? Ah. Uh, One of the types of uh, uh, Itara, one of those uh, humanoid races, but there's the ones that uh, uh, live near the water, and there's the ones that have birds, and uh, the ones with the fluffy dogs, and then there is uh, them. I, they they look like other Etarans. Uh, the ones that we that we met had these uh, butterfly like, you know, more like moths kind of animals with them. Very colorful, and the humanoids themselves they could float in the air. 
and they were getting in uh, they were getting in the way of our work but not in that way like they were displeased with what we were doing they didn't try to stop us it was more like they were pranking us that is very interesting Did you manage to communicate with any of them? At the time, I personally had no idea how to do so, but I do believe that Mr. Moyer exchanged a few words with them. He confirmed hmm. that they weren't angry at us and that we could continue our work. Right. Uh, out of curiosity, have you ever worked with, uh, with the gnomes? We have a few gnome members in our guild. I know they have their own interests in certain, uh, well, certain things that can be found in Ladaria. Well, the, the love for archaeology goes beyond the humanoid races. We have plenty of very enthusiastic individuals working for us. Of course. And I can't wait for you to be one of them. Just well, from... did you have anything in particular in mind? For me? Where does your interest lie? What do you specialize in? In people. <laughs> uh, in learning of, you know, the, the forgotten history of people. Well, uh, and in well, language. Let me tell you this, Mr. Moyer Jr. Uh, from just this very short conversation we just had, you seem to know things that the majority of the members of the Silver Claw itself wouldn't. So I'll tell you what, any information about it in the Hadra will be an incredible discovery. Okay. I would uh, uh, task you with prioritizing that. Well, I'm heading into their lens. You are excellent! Is there anything that you can do to maybe help our trek be a little more productive? What I can give you is the direction of uh, uh, the machines that we have found. That would be lovely. Uh, so, she will indeed give you directions. I'm just going to grab the map that's all the way back here. Uh, she points at a spot uh, uh, directly, at an area directly west of Simlielon, which of course, you know, is where uh, the one who stairs is known to... Oh, that doesn't work. Uh, where um, it was known to be. Oh, there we go. I'm using white, that's why. Uh, and the second location that she points out uh, uh, is the area around a uh, uh, lake that she describes to be past the peninsula and far to the northwest, uh, almost at the uh, near the, the edge of the continent. And with your knowledge, your new knowledge of uh, uh, the world beyond the peninsula, you know of this particular lake. You've gone far. Traveling and discovering new things is our job. Um, oh. Well, yeah, and if you could just maybe give me some indication of what perils we might face out there. <laughs> I'll 
I'll gather some notes for you, and once uh, your form is all signed up, she like pats a sack of papers on the table, uh, sure. then I'll... let's exchange notes. And that's something that can happen off camera. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed! Alright. Sorry, everyone. Okay, oh, fine. Um, Dennis? Yes? You're still with us? Yes. Do you have five In more spirit. minutes? Yeah, uh, sure. Okay. Um, so let me just say that uh, um, Brooke, as uh, he had planned, he heads for the dragon wagon. Um, and uh, um, immediately, as soon as you step into the tavern, uh, Kylo immediately gets your attention and just wordlessly points at a table uh, where you can see the uh, unmistakable, just uh, uh, <coughs> bulky, very tall uh, figure of a Firbolg. Kailu uh, smirks at you. How did that? How did that leaf work again? Can I talk through it, or no? Happened? You just you just do something to it, like let it go, or like throw throw it away, or break it, or whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll rip it apart. Oh, and then I'll walk through the towards Alex, the you, You're like oh, shaking the I'm woman's hand. I'm getting paged. No, no, no. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought you in real life for a second. That really threw me <laughs> off. Like, what? Um, you're, you're like just shaking the the, the pink haired uh, elf uh, hand right at that moment. So you're like, oh, that's. Oh. It's gonna be a little bit before. Um, All right. Before you can find uh, Brooke. I will go to Kalu first and order two beers. Is he sitting by himself? She? Did you say he? Um, it, it, you're just seeing this person from the back. It seems to be a masculine um, body. Huh. Okay. Well, then I'll get the two beers, put the money down, and head with the two beers to the table. Okay. Yeah, you you approach the uh, you approach the table and you put the beers down and um, you you kind of walk the um, beside the furbolg and now you can you can look at him and the um, instead of putting the the beers on the table um, you you kind of drop them from a few inches uh, uh, away from the surface um, the the loud sound of uh, of the mugs hitting the table makes uh, some people um, turn turn around from it, and then they just glance and they look away again. And you make eye contact with this furbolg, and uh, um, well, that this just can't be. The last time you saw this person, you were pulling his lifeless body down from a noose. And yet, Leo is sitting at his table, looking back at you, and smiling. And that's where we'll end the session. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be a cleric of the wolf, too. Yeah, probably, right? Everyone's, yeah, they're all getting resurrected and inducted into the wolf's secret army. Damn. I was wondering who that is. <laughs> I just, <laughs> out of the whole group, I just did not expect it to be him. This proves <laughs> that all Furbolgs do know each other. <laughs> yeah, there are actually only six Furbolgs. <laughs> you thought the gnomes were almost wiped out from the war? 